Well, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim live stream today. It's the 2nd of December 2020. It's now 49 minutes past three. We're currently running 49 minutes behind schedule. Please accept my sincerest apologies for the live stream today. We're all ready to start at three o'clock. However, this morning, we were meant to have a carpenter come round to our house. I've been trying to keep chatting for what's going on. Unfortunately, uh, someone at their company was sick. He had to come for someone else. So he didn't get here till one. And he'd only just got finished literally five minutes ago the sim was all ready to go uh, and and we have some nice shutters installed at least in uh, some of the rooms downstairs uh, beyond my technical DIY skills they're looking absolutely fabulous aren't Which they are, like, the huh what's that yeah, yeah my DIY skills <laughs> I can put up shells as well thanks a lot Mariana I hope you're doing very well anyway we've got a, a fantastic stream up for <laughs> for you this afternoon. We're going to be starting off here in X-Plane 11 in uh, Cardiff. We have Orbex Scenery Delights. Um, I have a good relationship with Orbex so they very kindly sent me over their Newcastle scenery. So I have Newcastle for X-Plane 11 and Microsoft Flight Simulator to, uh, to fly today. We're back in the IXCG 737-300 aircraft. We haven't flown some time. So we're going to be hopping over from Cardiff to Newcastle, flying to around 55 minutes and then we'll be switching over to Microsoft Flight Simulator for a VFR flight in the Cessna 150 from Newcastle to Dundee which should also take about 50 minutes to an hour. First sector on Vatsim, of course. We might even try the second se uh, sector on Vatsim as well. Try a nice VFR flight in the UK. You'll see how it's going on here. Now, who have we got in chat so far here? We've got uh, a guy saying, nice burn, Marianne. Yeah, she, I've already told her to shoo. <laughs> so rude to me. Uh, Ralph Bartle, don't worry, Captain. Yes, thank you very much. And again, I can apologise to the lady if you had other things planned this afternoon around it. I uh, must apologise for that. Uh, Baker 7498, oh, they've installed blinds on the plane after the incidents on the last flight. Yes, the complaints from the passengers, Baker 7498. They didn't want to see outside. What an epic stream that was on Sunday as well. Um, and I have to actually say here, I did leave a pinned comment in the last stream the other day about the Innie Builds A A300 team. Obviously, we had a crash in this aircraft, which caused all the issues we had, and then we had to use the mouse uh, to fly the aircraft to a ground. Uh, Innie Builds, believe it or not, within half an hour of me finishing the stream, I sent over the crash file. They've already fixed it for the the upcoming release it's absolutely awesome really really pleased with that i mean what a, uh, a refreshing thing to see in a developer in, in uh, a flight simulator uh devil said explain to the carpenter that you have a very important business call to be on with 500 people i saw that just before the stream yeah we've got around 300 people waiting here but uh, as i said thank you all very much for your patience right anyway uh, here we are in x -Plane 11 i have all of true earth installed for the entire uk in x -Plane 11 this is all books Orbex Cardiff as well, which obviously sits really nicely on the True Earth. We are live weather, so the latest weather conditions here, I haven't actually looked at the latest Meta. It's not too bad at all. Uh, 8 degrees. Uh, broken clouds at 2,800. Uh, we are running the sim three hours behind live time, so we can enjoy the True Earth scenery. Well, not that we'll see much on this sector anyway. Uh, but uh, yes, I'm running it three hours behind live time, so by the time we get to Newcastle, there should still be some light. Uh, instead, the plan was to do it live time, but because of the delay, it'll be night by the time we get to Newcastle. And here she is, uh, the IXEG737, brand new livery for you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much to Callum Reed, one of my members who was busy uh, beavering away making deliveries for me uh, yesterday. We have a new updated one. Uh, Retro Alpaca Airways for the 737-300. Uh, now, if you have the IXCG and you'd like to grab this livery uh, made by Calibre and my members, uh, use the command exclamation mark livery and chat and you'll be able to grab that straight away. Uh, so yes, there's a few other people that's joined us on the network as well. I think there's a couple of alpacas here in our small Cardiff base. We also have a, an Alitalia uh, MD-80 on top of a static aircraft here, which I forgot to remove here. But uh, yeah, all... Uh, Looking good. Uh, and now let's uh, jump into the cockpit. We'll turn off this uh, jazzy music. <laughs> it sounds like, again, you're in a hotel foyer. And uh, we'll get the, the ball rolling here. So we're in the latest version of the IXEG, uh, which is version 1.3.3. I tested this sec yesterday. I can see some of the improvements. There are a few things which I think need to work on, but I think the development uh, IXEG... They've had a, a bit of a hiatus from keeping this aircraft updated, but I think they're active at the moment now uh, and keeping things up to date. And it's important here to turn the uh, X-Plane 11, um, what do you call it, experimental flight model on uh, for it to work correctly. But for me, it's a little bit slippy with flaps and gear, but uh, otherwise, yeah, it's a high quality fidelity 
back creation of the 300. It's, it's a good worth investment. I think the cockpit looks absolutely stunning in here. But uh, yeah, the beauty of flying this aircraft is it's obviously very common uh, with the NG. So I could sort of uh, sort of uh, operate it uh, semi-realistically, which is great. Uh, right, let's get the show on the road. Uh, let's pop the battery on the bus here. We need to go to uh, ground services, connect the GPU. There we go. Oops, not preferences. Which one is it? Ground services. We'll turn that off here. Let's put the GP on the bus. 50, hey, 40, it's uh, rattled 30, into life. Thank you very much, 20, Dominic Orsini, for the five dollars. Uh, good morning from uh, New England, Captain and Mariana. Uh, Lucy and I are on board and happy to be here. Good morning from oh, New England. Oh, I forgot England, it does Captain this now. <laughs> Mariana, Lucy, and I are on Talking board and happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks, uh, Microsoft Jeanette. Uh, thank you very much, Dominic. Good morning, and I uh, hope you enjoy your breakfast with this stream. Uh, glad to have you on board, and uh, you're more, most welcome to always be on board the aircraft. Thank you very much, uh, Dominic. Um, right, so batteries on, GPUs on the bus. Uh, let's pop the electric hydraulic pumps on. There we are. Landing gear lever is down. We have one, two, three, four, five, six green lights, and then we check all the aircraft documentation, make sure it all good to go. Right, let's put the emergency exit lights on. Um, here's our operational flight plan, which I got off Simbri for around uh, 25 minutes ago, whilst the carpenter was still here. Um, so not much fuel required, it's just a 15 minute flight you can see here. So 4.8, I'm going to take an extra 30 minutes because, you know, reasons, that's him. Uh, so that's going to be 5.8, let's call for 6 tonnes of fuel. So if we go here to ground services, fuel, I think you can just simply increase this here to six tons and we're simulating quite a full load 120 passengers which is pretty much f uh, full on the 300 here that's going to give us a zero fuel weight of 46.2 so we'll set that up here as well uh, 46.2 uh, and I think we then press minimum. instant minimum. and I think the load is automatically added 46.2 it's already uh, simulated. I remember testing it yesterday whilst I increased this. You can see the gear going down as you increase the rate. Uh, thank you very much to Scott S. has just joined as a member. Welcome aboard. Uh, glad you enjoyed the content. You'll get invited to our members only Discord. Enjoy your custom emojis in chat as well and uh, I hope you enjoy all the uh, extra bonus stuff you get as a member. We did have a new member join just before the stream as well who's... Well, it's already missing from chat. So to the member who joined just before the stream, welcome aboard as well. I'm so sorry I couldn't chat you up. I wasn't here. <laughs> well, I was, but uh, but uh, tried to talk with the carpenter as well. So welcome anyway. 50, Scott S. There. 40, uh, thank you very much, Hickory Triple Two. Uh, <laughs> how yeah. how dare Mr. Orsini forget to mention the most popular uh, chief pilot? All hail Jack. <laughs> I'm sure he did mention Jack, didn't he? I thought he did. Oh. Mr. I'm sure, I'm sure Mr. Uh, Orsini uh, for the last donation mentioned Jack. <gasps> yeah, he didn't. Look, Captain and Mariana. Uh, that's only myself there. It's Dominic, you need to mention Jack as well. <laughs> but don't have to donate again. But thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ikri Triple O2 here. Right, let's get the show on the road, guys. The battery on. Uh, let's go to the pubs. We've got the fuel on board, so we'll put the seatbelt sign on. You can check all the gauges here. There's the, the six tons of fuel we need. Uh, let's work our way on down here. We're going to put the position lights to on. Tells the ground crew have AC power. Um, test attend. Uh, oh, that brings the cabin crew doors up. Um, flaps are up. That matches the flap indicator position. We'll put that to RTO now. We'll load up the FMC shortly. Trim. Ah, let's just set that now, which is already taken into account, I think, with the uh, uh, what we set up before. Uh, where is it here? It's under. Is it pre flight? No, it's not pre flight. Ground services trim, 4.4 uh, units. So let's set that now before we forget. There we are, there's 4.4 set. Uh, working our way down here, let's do. Oh my god, I didn't do the fault fire tests. Well, that's different to the NG already. When you do the NG, the, the bottle discharge lights don't illuminate. Uh, fault test, fault APU detector in op, and overheat detector is exactly the same as the NG. And then fire, overheat will well. And overheat detector, that's identical. Uh, now we'll do the cargo fire test. I just skipped that earlier. There we go. And that's a different system than on the NG as well. But it's all lighting up as expected. Uh, squawk will set later. Uh, ADF we will be using for departure. Uh, well, we won't be. No, there is an ND, there is an ADF here, but there's no point tuning it or using it. Uh, rudder A on trim. 
there's three and zero. Manual gear extension door is closed. Circuit breakers are all in, and uh, flight recorder is checked. There's the Mac airspeed warning oh. test. Uh, oh. Stall speed. Oh. Uh, stall warning test. You can hear them rattling away here. IRS to nav. That's going to take us seven minutes here. This latitude circuit breakers are all in, and uh, yeah, we now commence the boarding. Uh, Patrick L, welcome aboard as a member as well. Glad you're enjoying the content. Again, you'll get invited to our members only Discord to all the members that have joined so far today. Uh, to do that, go to Google, type in YouTube Discord synchronization, follow those steps there. Make sure you do that on the Discord web browser version. Thank you very much, guys, for your support. Um, what says, do you get the freezes if you make amendments to your route mid-flight? Uh, I tested the sector yes they what and I did do some directs and it worked fine I didn't have any issues in the IXEG with that so uh, no problems with this and uh, Nathan Atkinson says Cessna 150 yes on the uh, next sector uh, if you've read the uh, the video description so IXEG 737-300 for this sector in the Cessna 150 for the next sector uh, right let's grab some weather um, we have no one online at all covering this sector so we're just going to base it on the meta Right now in Cardiff, 310 at 11 knots, so that'll be uh, runway 30 for departure, a few clouds at 3,408 degrees, QNH is 1016, annoyingly, you have to set the altimeters all independently, which, yes, is very realistic, but I do like it when the developers consider, or take into consideration for the fact that there's only one of you operating this aircraft, and they sink all three, but I suppose yeah. for immersion and realism, that's all good. Ah! Welcome as a new subscriber. We have a new, a little bigger we're testing at the moment. <laughs> Welcome on board, Mike Arwine. I hope you're uh, doing very well. Uh, very, uh, very subtle, that is. Very subtle it is. I, I made that the other day. Uh, probably got some complaints about it, but it's a, it's a nice way of internationally saying welcome to any new subscribers. Um, Cool, so PFD is set, QNH is set, V-Speeds will uh, set up shortly, uh, shortly, obviously we're running the clock uh, three hours behind live time, so that is correct in the sim, and now it's time to load the flight management computer. So we're going to be the Alpaca 4-1 November Tango, we're in uh, G-Chicken today, uh, <laughs> even though I think the reg externally might say... Welcome. Uh, golf flight deck to sim, but uh, it's all looking good here. Welcome aboard as well, uh, Velocity Gaping. Uh, <laughs> Change promotion says interesting. Yes, I know. It should do different welcomes as well. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's the flight plan. Uh, 48 minutes, uh, 4.8 tonnes of fuel. Uh, we said we'd take the six tonnes here, and this is the flight plan here. I updated the air rack last night, so we've got the latest version installed. Uh, we're in Cardiff, which is Echo Golf, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, and we're going to go for GPS left. And uh, going to Newcastle, which is going to be Echo Golf, November Taco, and we're going to be today the Alpaca 4 1 November Tango. That's installed. Correct. Installed? That's inputted. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Runway 30. Uh, Brecken 1 Alpha, even though I always want to say Barcelona 1 Alpha because that's the uh, IATA code for Barcelona. Uh, so that's in. Uh, from Brecken, November 864 to Niton. And then from Niton, Upper Papa 17 to Pole. And then we're going to select the arrival, which today is going to be the Pole 1 November, ILS 25. Um, those transitions associated with the arrival, the procedural approaches, I think. I'm just going to leave that blank for now and just route from Etsess to the centre fix. And if we don't get vectors, we'll sort of self position ourselves or perhaps fly a procedural approach. We'll uh, have a look at that when we get a bit closer. So I'll activate that. That is executed. Um, the UFIS panel is frustratingly down here but I love this from the IXEG um, it brings up the ND whilst you're fiddling with this now I don't know if it's something with the the classics and like the NG but prior to RS alignment you should be able to review the routing in the NG you certainly can maybe you can't in the 300 but uh, certainly in the IXEG you can't review your routing until the IRS is aligned unfortunately uh, so we'll have to check that just prior to or after um, the IRS alignment uh, that's all set then. Let's go up here on the other. Oh no, we need to do performance. Sorry. So index performance, zero fuel weight. Um, you can't line select this and just have it pre-populated. You actually need to check what the zero fuel weight is, uh, which is um, can't remember now. Forty-six point two. So we'll call that forty-six point three. 
Uh, reserves for our alternate, which is Edinburgh. Uh, that's going to be 2.4 tonnes. Cost index we'll use 30, like we always do. Uh, flight level 280, so quite a short sector, so there's not much point going any higher than that. We'll execute that. Top of climb wind, I think since they've updated the IXCG, you can actually input this data. Whether it takes anything into account, I'm not too sure, but it'll uh, take it, so we'll enter it. Uh, minus 3. Transition altitude here in Cardiff is 6,000 feet. That's executed. Uh, we're going to go full 20k. I have no accurate performance data, so I'm just going to go full power, which will be more than sufficient. Uh, flap 5 for departure. That shouldn't be pre-populated. Trim, we've already calculated, is 4.2. We'll set the V-speed. 31, 33, and 142 knots, which we can now set up here. Perfect. So, FMC is all loaded. Uh, so, we'll leave that on the takeoff page that side. So, we'll pop the yaw damper on. Lights are extinguished. We have an audio control panel, IRS transfer switch, and I guess EFIS. Uh, whether that's meant to say EFIS, I'm not sure, but it says FE here. Um, fuel's nice and cold, but uh, don't need to worry about that. Fuel valve's closed. No fuel in the centre tank. So, just put the main tank pumps on. Check the cross feed valve. Uh, bright, dim, bright, and uh, off. Galley, we can switch on. Ground power is available and already on. APU, actually no, we'll get that started now because we're not too far behind where we need to be. If we can actually, there we go. Start, so there's low oil pressure. Uh, panel lighting set as required. Emergency exit lights are armed. Faster seatbelt sign is on. The window heat we can pop on at this stage as well. Engine anti-ice, wing anti-ice is off. Electric hydraulic pumps on. Got the doors all closed already. Needles are all on zero. And old school temperature controllers like you get on the, the um, 200 still. Um, but we'll put the packs auto, isolation valve open, bleeds on, 280. We can set up here for our cruise level. Elevation, our destination is at Newcastle 260 feet. So we'll put in 260 here. And the cabin altitude you want at 28,000 feet is 5,000 feet. So that's set auto. We'll put that to flight. Uh, so that's all set. Uh, for the MCP, what I'm going to do is put the runway heading, which is 2908. And then we're going to have both sides here, 031. I'll explain why very shortly. So 031. This side and 031. This side as well, and we're going to set here 6,000 feet. There's no ATC, so I'm going to imagine we've got our clearance to climb to 6,000, which is the sit stop altitude. Flight directors are on, uh, flaps are up, and just get switches off, water brakes, audio gauges are where we'd expect them to be. Weather radar tilt to plus five. The IXCG does have a, a functioning weather radar, which is quite cool. Terrain in up, well, that should extinguish once the IRS is lined, and the rest is all. Set. Um, that's an FE EFIS as listed bit. Ah, uh, Air 88, what are reserves? Uh, reserves is the amount of fuel. That figure that I put in the FMC here, buddy. Um, that's the amount of fuel that we need to divert minimum, a minimum amount of fuel we need to divert from going around in Newcastle, flying the full mist approach departure from Newcastle, cruise, descent into Edinburgh, and land with at least the 30 minutes of final reserve fuel intact. So uh, that's the figure that you put in here, which is dictated for the fly plan. It's the sum of these two figures. Um, 1194, the fuel we need to divert to Edinburgh, and our final reserve. And we must always ensure, guys, that we, we never t intend to burn this fuel. If we ever see we're going to land and with less than this figure, we have to declare Mayday fuel, because that is 30 minutes of fuel uh, holding at 1500 feet above the aerodrome so that fuel we do everything we can to protect that fuel and not burn it um so fmc is all loaded and the aircraft's all pretty much ready to go we'll pop the ap on the bus and ap bleed is on we've got dual bleed and i think when i did this yesterday yeah i get duct overheat i don't know why um 
that's a non-normal situation, but it's one of the few things you can actually trip to reset here. As soon as I put the APU bleed on, I'm always getting ducked overheats. And a duct overheat is, is uh, yeah, it's pretty serious. It's like hot air essentially escaping the bleed air system. So we uh, take that quite seriously. Um, right, what else we've got to do? We've just got to brief you guys, haven't I? So let's have a little look at the charts. So uh, we're on stand one here in Cardiff. We're going to push back. It's actually a good point. In, how are we going to move this out of here? Um, I think I'll try and do what the... Alitalia did, so I'm going to push back in this direction and then face north, otherwise it's going to be a really long pushback. Uh, sorry, not face uh, north, face kind of uh, southwest. Uh, and then we're going to go Juliet, left on Alpha, and then taxi to hold point, full lane for Alpha 1. We've got uh, takeoff run available of 2,350 metres, I think. Runway 30, 2,354 full length. And the SID for us is the Brecon 1 Alpha, runway 30. So we're going to climb straight ahead to 4 DME off India Charlie Whiskey Alpha. So what I'm going to do is make that active, 110.7. 110.7, so we've got the DME here on the left hand side for the ILS. And then we're at 4 miles, we're going to make a right turn to intercept the uh, radial 211 inbound to Brecon. Uh, so we've got 031 and we'll put Brecon on the first officer's side active, 1745. And uh, we've got on the MCP both the inbound course is set to 031 for backup, so we can tune the VOR both sides once we get to 4 miles to uh, back up everything there. Uh, so that's it, nice simple altitudes, uh, uh, Sid, sorry, uh, all the altitude restrictions are in, 2300 above. 3,500, 4,500. Ah, here's a nice little neat trick for you, okay? And this is true to the NG. I hope it works anyway. You'll notice that we have the transition altitude set in the um, FMC, haven't we? 6,000 feet. And it says 6,000 feet. That is correct, okay? However, if you go to the legs page, it says here it's flight level 60, okay? Well, technically that's incorrect because the, the transition altitude's at 6,000, but the FMC looks to the nearest foot. So if you want that to actually correctly show 6,000 feet, all you need to do is put this to a foot above it. And this is a, a trick we do on the line as well. If you put that to 6,001 feet, execute, go to the legs page, hey presto, it now says 6,000 feet. So that's a, it's correct now. It's correctly displayed not as a flight level, as an altitude. So uh, it's a nice little thing. You don't need to do it. We don't primarily use VNAV to level off, but it's just to remind you, perhaps if you, your workload increases and you can't quite remember what the stop altitude is, you look at that and go, ah, it's 6,000 feet, not flight level 60, because obviously flight level is presuming that you have, have a standard set. So that's it. Guys, we're actually doing really good for time. It usually takes 30 minutes or so to do a full setup. Uh, we're, we're ready to go with 20 minutes to roll. So what I'm going to do is uh, organise the better pushback pre-plan. Let's uh, wiggle our way out of here. So how are we going to do this? I reckon if we do something like that, that, uh, pro probably not approved at all. Uh, and then that, so hopefully it will get us there. Ground to cockpit. Oh, it's this Norris. guy again. Call me through the menu when you're ready. The moody one. Let's start the pushback. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving Perfect. Uh, London Centre's online now, is it? Maybe I should get my clearance. They might not be covering Wales, though. Let's have a little gander on the map here. London Centre is online, but unfortunately... Cardiff is not over London. <laughs> but we do have tower. We do have a tower frequency has just come online. Let's listen to Cardiff Tower. Uh, get a clearance now. 133.1. Oh, god damn it. No, it's a transfer one. Oh, no. It's actually telling me to contact him now. There we go. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Copy that. Copy that. That's not, that's not a good readback. <laughs> Cardiff Tower, hello. It's Alpaca 41, November Tango on stand one. Uh, request departure clearance to Newcastle, please.
Is he actually talking to me and I haven't actually? Uh, should be. Cardiff Tower. Oh, I'm transmitting on. Ground, Alpaca 738 request. Push I'm transmitting on. Box. How. That's super realistic. So, because I hadn't actually selected VHF 1, it's my fault. I hadn't actually selected VHF 1, I wasn't actually transmitting on VHF 1. That's super realistic. Good for the IXCG boys. I think the Zebabot does the same, to be fair, but. Yeah, make sure you actually transmit on the active frequency. Go copy that, copy that. Perfect. Cardiff Tower, hello, it's Alpaca 1, uh, question 4 1 November Tango, stand 1, departure crew to Newcastle, please. Alpaca 4 1 November Tango, Cardiff Tower, forward to Aircraft Tango. Uh, 737300. Alpaca 4 1 November Tango, Roger, it's information, foot shot, clear to Newcastle, Brooklyn 1 Alpha, score 761, QH 1016. Uh, cleared to Newcastle, Brecca 1 Alpha, departure, uh, QNH1016. Just say that score again, please. 761. Uh, say again. Score 7661. Ah, 7661, Alpaca. Uh, one, four, uh, 4 1 November Tango. 50, 40, Perfect. 30, I couldn't hear that score 20, at all. Uh, 7661. That's a dangerous score. And, uh, six hours of feet. all the oh, content. Glad to finally catch a stream live for once instead of watching the replay. Thank you. Treat yourself and Mariana to something nice on me for all the hard work you both do. You deserve it. Oh, Angels Aviation. Oh, how much? Angels Aviation. Oh, my God. I thought that was ten pounds, not a hundred. Flipping heck, Angels Aviation. That's ridiculous. Oh my days, I don't remember. <laughs> oh god, I know who you are, but thank you. I'm trying to catch up with everyone here. That was absolutely out of this world, you you silly man. Uh, well, well, I'm, I'm roasting, I'm, I'm blushing, We've gone bright red. And Barriad is probably squeaking, that's very kind. And we've just come out of lockdown today, so... We we're looking to go out for lunch or dinner somewhere, but I don't think we can, we can because we're, we're in a hot, well, like the pretty much the whole country in a high risk area, but we'll make sure we go out and uh, get so on, on behalf of that. Thank you very much, Angel Aviation. That's uh, unbelievable generosity there. Absolutely crazy. Thank you. Out of this world. Jesus. Um, guys, as I said, you know, it's very much appreciated. This is also our second job now as well, but as I said, just enjoy the stream. Just punch the thumbs up button. Like and subscribe, that's all we ever ask, but that is Hello, absolutely good evening. crazy, thank you. Uh, Devil, have you heard the vaccine news? I have. Uh, promising, promising, rolling out next week as well. 90% uh, effective as well. Very promising, very promising. Right, we're all ready to go anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm literally right. Bloody <laughs> At Cardiff Tower, Alpaca 41 November Tango, stand one, request push and start. Alpaca 41 November Tango, stand one, push and start approved. Push start approved, Alpaca 41 November Tango. Right, let's do the uh, checks below the line, so packs off. Alpaca 73, request push and start. Addy Clitch Knight is on. Uh, Alpaca uh, 4, Killer Mike, it looks like you've entered the runway. Have oh, valid permission, but that's fine. The runway 3 0, clear for takeoff, so 310 degrees. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? We need to. No, 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 clear for takeoff. Uh, 3 0. I'm back 4 kilo mic. 4 kilo mic, report to Chief Pilot. I'm gonna have a letter. Will Jackson have a letter on his front door? <laughs> Oops. Right, uh, no, what am I doing? Out off, out off. How do we do out off on this bad boy? Let's put that to. I'm just gonna put it to CR8. Right? The reason is it's because on. It won't, it make sure that the controller on that VATSIM sees us correctly as opposed to actually being pra uh, practically. Annoying, but we wouldn't do that in real life, otherwise uh, aircraft are going to get TAs and stuff also on approach because an aircraft taxi. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 9, 8. Uh, thank you very much, Captain K, for your $5. Uh, very good evening, sir. It says uh, the following. Cap. 
Fever retracts add noticeable drag IRL. Cap. Uh, thanks a lot, Cap, Cap K. Uh, that was very generous of you. Uh, yes, so we don't use them, obviously, but uh, the retracts do, in fact, add a little bit of drag, apparently in the region of, and I've never noticed it, uh, 50 to 100 feet per minute increased rate of descent. I think more so on the 200 and the 300, the classic. So, uh, I remember flying with a captain once, and he told me. Um, but, uh, yeah, on the NG... You know, we're not going to use it to give ourselves. Uh, you know, we're not going to use it to, you know, fly. You know, fly a to get an extra hundred feet per minute. Uh, does Gavin feature in the service Did I see someone in chat called uh, Gavin's friend, the infamous Gavin's friend from uh, Red Dead Redemption? Hilarious if that was the case. <laughs> Right, starting engine number two. It's worth noting I've got the, the BSS sound pack um, for this aircraft. It's completely free to download. It was a, a freebie from the... B is it called... Are they called Blue Sky Simulations? If you called BSS. Um, they do payware sound packs, but this one was completely free for the community. Much better than the stock sounds. The stock sounds on this aircraft aren't that, uh, aren't that great. Cool, that's a very aggressive taxi. Uh, it's oops. Very late putting the fuel in here, but the sounds on this are really nice. On the engines, especially. Can you hear, can you hear it in the background? Yeah, very nice. So the same, I think. Uh, started cut out at 54%, so it's already happened. So it looks all stabilised, low pressure is extinguished. Two, around 4632 is stable, starting now engine number one. The engines um, look absolutely incredible on this add-on as well, and they look so, so pretty. Uh, Brett, enjoy the flight, Captain. I'll have to catch up later. Thank you very much. Operation complete. Set parking brake. So there comes 25%. Parking brake is set. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Actually, you know what? I think... Can you hear? They've still got a little bit of that arcade F1 car sound. Listen. Haven't quite got rid of that. <laughs> a jumper run. The MD-80 was known for the drag of the retractables. I think someone mentioned that whilst we were streaming the Rotor MD-80 a, a while back, that yeah, the retracts were particularly draggy. As I mentioned at the start of the stream, it's a good aircraft, this IXCG, and uh, it's nice to see X, X Aviation, or, or the IXCG, I don't know who runs it, uh, seem to be active in updating it here, because there are a few little, I don't know, I've only ever flown the NG, so I can't comment exactly, but on approach with the gear and flaps, this aircraft seems unbelievably slippy, far too slippy for my liking. We'll see you next time, and have a safe flight. Check. Uh, yeah, because the, the NG is slippy, but I, I'd find it hard to believe that the 300 was slippier, it's, you know, because the NG's a new aircraft, more efficient. Uh, I, I do struggle to slow this aircraft down on approach. With Even with you put gear down on flat 30, it just seems very slippy, and, and I've changed the experimental flight model. I, I don't really notice as much, much difference here, but hopefully they'll uh, fine-tune that. Right, Nigel's showing us the uh, bypass pin. All looking good. We'll do the before taxi flow now. Generators on, APU's off, start switch is continuous, probe heat on, anti-ice off, uh, packs, oh it's so sensitive, packs, auto, isolation valve auto, AP bleed is off, and set, uh, flaps, we're doing a new thing now, so my alerts uh, are going to go on for taxiing critical phases, take off and landings as well, uh, so I just don't miss ATC there, so that's on, uh, let's do the flight controls, tower. Pack forward, the tree, ready for taxi. back, Left and right. Here comes the rudders. Full right and full left. There's recall. And that's it. Uh, you then have to complete the before taxi checklist. Which they have one here. I just, I just did that out of habit for the Zebo bot. But yeah. Um, when you taxi, just quickly run through that. Make sure the aircraft's correctly configured for taxi and then correctly configured for takeoff. Um, and you'll be ground. Perfect. Alpaca 4 1 November Tango request taxi. After the company 
Also, copy traffic passes from right to left. Taxi holding point Alpha on runway 30, Albaca 41, November Tango. Right, so we're just waiting for our colleague. There he is. He's on the newer version of the fleet, uh, since Alpaca Airways have just recently invested in the 300. Ah, uh, Felis is here. Hope you're doing well. Felis, the developer of the outstanding uh, Tupolev T154, which we, again, haven't flown for a while because it scares me. Um, made a lot of sounds in FMOD waiting for the uh, TSS engine sounds. Are you referring to your 200, Felis? Which is, uh, I think, still in development. I know we haven't spoken in a while, but uh, each of us have been rather busy, no doubt. Uh, Eric Bright, what is the button next to the master caution? That is the fire warning light. If you guys head over to my Instagram and see the last two or three videos ago I posted, you'll actually see what uh, see how it shakes around. If you want to see how that works, go check out my Instagram. I posted a video about that uh, right now. You can comment on it and say, I came for the IXEG stream. <laughs> That'd be wicked. Right. Uh, we've been cleared to taxi. A bit late here, so Reese parking brakes. Let's do a config check. There we are. No takeoff config warning. Just listen to these edges spool up. Have a listen. Really nice. So quite light today. We have got a full load of passengers, but not much fuel, so we don't need much thrust to taxi. Uh, flight fund. This aircraft is a 737 three hundred. Alpaca seven three eight. Runway three zero. Clear. Takeoff. Three one zero. The green one. We're not. Clear for takeoff three zero. Alpaca seven three eight. So we'll crawl there right, and we are clear to left. As I mentioned, the scenery is from uh, Orbex. We're all covered by Orbex today. So I just need to make a quick note of the V speed here because it caught me off guard yesterday because it doesn't talk or shout them out at you. Uh, so 31 VRs 133. Okay, so we just need to bear those speeds in mind here. I'll try and taxi on the centre line. Uh, that's something I can recommend. <laughs> right, let's do the before takeoff checklist. So config we checked. Flaps we have five required, five selected green lights. Stab trim 4.2 units. Is set takeoff briefing. Behind the company, 737, line up and wait, uh, 30 behind Alpaca 41, November Tango. Uh, so PAX auto bleeds are on, the V speeds are set for departure, 31, 33, and 42. It's a Brecon 1 Alpha, so climbing straight ahead, 4 DME off the ILS, and then we're going to make a right turn inbound to the Brecon VOR. Stop climb 6,000 feet. Uh, NADP2, any problems will climb straight ahead, fly to the MSA, which will be, I think, 3,000 feet. Uh, oh no, 4,000 feet. The highest terrain is to the north at 3,000. I don't just go up to 4,000 feet. That's it. Check's complete. And we have been cleared behind the departing traffic to line up and wait. So we'll pop all the lights on. Taxi light off to remind us we've not been cleared for takeoff. Strobes on. Transponder's already on TARA, which it shouldn't be. Order throttle LNAV. Ah, uh, yes. For some reason it did this yesterday. LNAV didn't arm. I don't know why. Um. So we'll just leave it in disengage, and you should be able to engage LNAV once you're above 400 feet. Same as the NG if you can't engage it. And just the weather radar to come on as well. So on, plus 5, and airport, and weather. Oh, crikey, good job I stopped breaking because I was about to go on the grass. <laughs> so we're just waiting for our takeoff clearance. Too much stress there. Looking good, guys. Nice to be back in Blighty. <laughs> uh, Andy H1302 doesn't arm on the ground. Caught me out to it. Could be a feature of the 400. Um, uh, sorry, the 300, the classics. Maybe it, it is true to the real aircraft too. And VNAV as well. I don't know how to engage out intervent to initiate descent. I think. VNAV in the 300 isn't anywhere near as good as, as VNAV on the NG. Alpaca 4 1 November Tango, runway 30, clear takeoff, left, and 3 1 0 degrees 1 1 knots. Alpaca 4 1 November Tango. Guys, you know what to do in chat? Toga's in chat. Let's go on our way to uh, Newcastle. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Look, I haven't even remembered the timer. Look. Uh, timing. Parking brake released. 40%. And enjoy these sounds, guys, because they do sound absolutely wicked in a desktop sim. So, engines are stabilised. Uh, where's the little toga switch? I can't remember where it was. Oh no, maybe on the thrust lever. Oh, I've got it on my joystick. Let's do that. There we are. Set takeoff thrust. Light forward pressure. There we are. Takeoff thrust set. Indications normal. The 80 knots checked to release that forward pressure. V1, rotate. A little bit fast rotation there, but we'll take it. Pause rear climb. Gears coming up. And on to the flight directors. Off we go. So there's a thousand feet we'll bug up. Uh, Unicorn 122 Decimal 8, Alpaca 4, 1 November, Tango, bye. So there's Klein Thrust. Let's select Flaps 1. Oh, I forgot to engage Earl Nerve. And that's what happens if you don't verify your roll mode uh, at 400 feet. And flaps coming up. That's better. Just trimming those down now to maintain initially the up speed. That should do us nicely. So I'll engage the autopilot command. And we can go V nav, there's 250 knots. Set stat. Uh, we're climbing to 6,000, but there's no ETC. So let's go straight up to our cruise level, which is 280. Uh, set standard 1013 once, twice three times and now we can do the after takeoff checklist. So gear to off, order brake to off, start switches off, uh, retracts and tax light can come off, air conditioning and pressurization, diff pressure is 1.9, climbing and the rest is all set. Oh, do that to release the cabin crew and that's it, after takeoff checklist complete, we're on our way to uh, Newcastle, lovely departure. And we better tune up uh, Unicom now. Two two decimal eight. There we go. Ah, I know what I've forgotten to do. Don't forget to delete your restriction. There you go. Six thousand feet executes, and then verify N one V nav speed. And we're on our way. Uh, Simon Boat, what's our ETA? Uh, this plus three hours. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 26. 17, 26. Uh, real world time. Remember, we're running the sim for three hours behind my time. How's the sound? Probably a little bit loud and annoyingly um, IXCG because it has its own sound pack. I can't control the volume there, but I think I can there. I have a good way of gauging the sound because if I play the music and you can't hear it, I'll turn it down a tiny bit. Is. That's better. I've turned it down a tiny bit so we can enjoy the music here as well. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's been a while since I've flown the IXEG. Um, they have updated it a couple of versions, I think. So we, this is 1.3.3. .3. I think the last one I tested 1.3.0. And so far, it's been really nice. The whole setup, the takeoff, I think it works really nicely. Um, feels good, everything seems really nice, um, VNAV on the set doesn't, I think the needs work is the FMC VNAV um, and the drag profile with flaps, but otherwise it, it's it's a lot more truer to its original price tag, I felt before it was a bit overpriced, it's a lot of money, but I think you're getting, I think you're getting the quality through, and if they keep being active, listening to, to the public, like, uh, you know, sort of what Zebo does. Zebo's brilliant because you you say this is working, you fix it straight away. Patches obviously very quickly, which some people just don't have the time to do. Uh, Zebo included, but um, I was so impressed with with um, any builds the other day. 
when we had those issues, they they were they wanted to get hold of me to find out what it was. They were like, don't shut the sim down, send us the SASL log, I don't know what any of this means. And they found the fault and they fixed it. It's really nice to see. I think it'll be really loud outside because I can't control the volume, but uh, have a look at the true earth, guys, below. This is absolutely phenomenal. I'm really surprised at the performance I get from the PC from Orbex, and I'm not just saying this to because Orbex very kindly sent me all their, all their stuff. It is uh, coming through the UK. Awesome. And like Orfe 4 XP, I haven't got the the, su the space to store this on my main PC, so I just store the all, all the true earth on my uh, hard drive, my conventional drive, and you can just link it in, in the shortcut. It's so easy to do, you just do it through Orbex Central. But what are we getting here? I'm getting 46 FPS, 48, 50 basically. Bear in mind I'm running IXEG, x 11, Streamlabs, Spotify, other stuff in the background, Active Sky. It's, uh, my PC's a full load, well, it should be flat, flat out, no, it's not, it's just ticking over. Very impressive at all. Uh, Wilhelm Glazer, where can I get the same PC as yours? Well, the PC, exact PC from Chill Blast, it's called the Aero Destiny 2. Uh, it's actually discontinued, um, but all the specs, I'm sure you can build one with the similar specs here for probably a quite a bit cheaper now, because I know there's brand new graphics cards, and 3080 this, and uh, ready on that. <laughs> I don't understand any of it. But yeah, I'm very, I've been very pleased with the performance, and, and um, there's situations rare situations where sometimes the PC is working a little bit harder, but um, I'll perhaps upgrade it this time next year. There's some traffic ahead of us, look, on the TCAS, which is cool, 1300 feet. Can we see him? 50, there he is, 40, look at that. 30, <laughs> We're 20, catching up with you. 10, We're actually going much faster than I don't know how heavy he is, but we might outclimb him. Greetings from Lithuania. Ah, I'm hello. Stream with a cup of hot chocolate. Oh, cheers. Kid Bear, Grin. welcome back again uh, for the, the stream, and thank you very much for five euros. I hope you're doing very well in Lithuania. I've got a funny feeling it's very cold around there this time of year, but I uh, hope you're doing well and uh, keep that uh, hot cocoa <laughs> around your around your hands. Enjoy your drink, and thanks for coming in. So quite a short flight guys, as soon as we get to flight level 280 we will be beginning to start thinking about the, the flight and arrival into uh, Newcastle. And the approach, but uh, yeah the weather forecast looking good. We might get a little bit of AT, oh no, London Centre is just outside our uh, zone, but we do have Newcastle approach and ground online which is pretty cool. I don't usually do external views, but because of, uh, this is the first time we've been over um, Orbex True Earth. Which is basically like Orpho 4 xp but on steroids. <laughs> it looks so good on VFR as well. It just looks like you're flying over the UK. Or Wales, I should say. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Alex, two Lithuanians here, there literally dozens of us, so cool. And to all my Lithuanian fr friends, we've not flown to Lithuania yet, have we? I'm so sorry. Maybe I'll make a note of that. In fact, I'll put a, a note of it right now. Because I have a, a bit of a plan for the next few days at least, but uh, I'll keep an eye out for that, some events in Lithuania, as we can head over to Vilnius. I guess the mystery, uh, <laughs> last time I checked the map, the Wales uh, was in the UK. I mean, yes, the same way that Scotland is in the UK, but uh, I don't want to cause any political rifts here. To be fair, I don't think the Welsh are <laughs> begging for independence and like some Scots, but again, I don't wish to discuss any of that here. I am little, I'm doing my PPR in a couple of months, can't wait uh, for my first landing, hope it's a butter. <laughs> All in good time, M. Little, I can assure you now, 
you will have periods during your flight training where you think, I can't do this or I can't battle a land, because I had the same. Even even on my type rating on the 7-3, everything you do, you'll have situations where I can't quite get the hang of this, but give it patience and time. You'll be you'll be greasing it in. But remember, well, certainly in a Boeing, the, cri uh, the criteria for a safe landing doesn't necessarily need to be a smooth one, so just bear that in mind. Uh, Nathan Axon, a new livery. Yes, one of the members very kindly made us uh, Alpaca Airways retro livery, which is really kind of him. Uh, Callum Reed, so thank you very much, Callum. I have I have two um, ICG liveries now. Flydeck to Sim one from Jordan, where New Zealand a member of mine, and uh, Callum Reed. And have a well, they do this in their free time. They just go ahead and make them. They're so generous. Oh my god, I've done the guys. Where are you? Where's my pre cruise checks? <laughs> Fuel four pumps. Uh, four point eight. Lights. APs off, pressurization's all set. Uh, release the passengers. Do that recall. There we are. All good. Checks complete. As I was saying, let's have a look at this livery. Very nice. Very, very 80s, 90s. <laughs> Love it. There's that there's NG right ahead of us. Oh my god, he's actually really close. We're out climbing him. Yeah, that's actually a little bit of a... Two, he's only three miles ahead. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully Newcastle approach will give us some spacing later. Who's that ahead of us? He's so harder. Uh, XVLP, how often are you like to fly these winter months? Not at all, XVLP. In fact, annoyingly, I was meant to be flying a week on Sunday, but the, I've lost the flight. Lost the flight to, to someone else, unfortunately. Um, so I last flew over two weeks ago, and my next flight's not going to be until after Christmas, end of December. So, um, once a month, once a month uh, on average. I've, I've, did you find one? Oh, I, I just have another one. I've got a bottle of water lying around somewhere. Right, approaching our cruise level, flight level 280. And there we go. 28,000 feet. Uh, weather radar tilt. Still at plus three, so I should be slowly reducing that here. But just to show that the uh, weather radar works in the IXCG, if I put it all the way down to minus six, you'll start getting some uh, ground clutter. Ranged around 80 miles, that's where we typically have it in the cruise. Already around 90 miles on top of descent, look. And you might see, look, there you go. That that scan there uh, from the radar, radar is ground return, so that's no good to us. And what you want to do is have the tilt set to around minus one, so you just have a little bit of ground return coming around 80, 100 miles, and then anything in between is going to be some, some weather. So yeah, something like that is fine. It's quite a light like, real aircraft, but it's it's quite a nice system to have on the ICG. Descending. Should be, be descending in the turn, but there we go. Right. So, uh, let's have a little chat about this... Uh, Set up a flight and approach into uh, Newcastle. So, cruising at decimal 7.2, um, which is fine for us. Uh, over Wales, we're going to be heading towards Chester and Manchester. There is our destination, Newcastle upon Tyne. Uh, Javius, do you ever use the gain on the weather radar? Very rarely. Um, has it even functioned here? I don't think so. I primarily just leave it in auto. Uh, I mean, the new NGs, they don't even have a tilt function. You just basically select the level uh, at which you want to assess, flight level 280, 290, and you can find each level uh, the weather. It's, it's far more sophisticated than the older uh, 
where the radar systems were tilted. Uh, I was asking a question there, Peter. Oh, I think someone's having a conversation here. Oh, Peter M, how close to real flying is this? Yeah, put it this way. Flying the NG now for nine years, just over nine years, and this is what you have available now in 2020 in home desktop simulators in a sim like x 11 with the, the, the quality aircraft you have. It's, I can just, it's like a work, really. And I say that genuinely. Yes, the feeling and sensations on your body are not the same. Yes, non normal situations can't be modeled and this can't be used as an official training device, but. I can practice my SOPs here, or apply my SOPs to a 99.9% .9 accuracy, and the aircraft behaves and, and reacts there. That's why I've used desktop sims for the best part of 20 years. And uh, throughout my flight training, I had a hiatus when I when I became an airline pilot. And then when I became a TRI, which was a, basically a sim instructor, I went back into simming again, and that's when I started the channel uh, four years ago now. So yeah, to answer your question, can you, can you, can, you know, is this realistic? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I wouldn't do it. I I only generally do as realistic flights as possible in aircraft like this, and it is in parallel with accuracy. The IXCG, the Zemo Bard, uh, any builds, all incredible. But I could only I've only flown the NG, so there's a limit a limit to what I can tell you uh, with regards to things like the Airbus. It's all a bit of a whim, <laughs> but that's what makes the stream so fun, guys. Isn't it? Right, anyway, less less nap, more action. Let's get the uh, codes for Newcastle. I've got far to go. Here we are, there's Newcastle. So we're going to be flying the pole arrival. There is a transition from et says, but all I've done is et says to the center fix, so I'm going to expect fix, especially as it's ATC. Uh, so that's the arrival. Approach. It's going to be runway 25 today. So we've got NDBI LS25. And grab a airport chart and parking stands. Lovely. So, I think last time we flew this, we couldn't get some winds in there, but I now think they're working. But, if I remember rightly, I can't enter a speed restriction. Okay, so apparently I can, but it's not filling in here. I don't know if that's a bug or something, but yeah. So, I can get the winds in, but I can't set ISA or QNH yet. Uh, and also, that comes up as 310 feet. <laughs> you should be able to just put three. Well, in the NG, you can. Classic might be might be that you have to put the whole. I don't know. Uh, two three nine at seventy four. Uh, two hundred uh, two forty at fifty nine. Uh, One hundred two seven zero at forty one. Uh, Q and H, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I've tried yesterday. I put ISA, Q and H, all sorts of different. There is, it just won't accept it. I don't know why, but um, perhaps it's uh, needing some more coding or it's there. So with dashed lines, which means it needs information, not mandatory, but um, you can put it in. But it won't accept it, unfortunately. Um, so descent winds are in. Uh, one thing I know they have added because it didn't work before. You can actually now put uh, runway in the fixed page, which is great. Um, so that is now correct. Before that didn't work. So you can put your 10 mile ring in, your 4 mile 50, ring, and this is just 40, operator's configuration 30, package, which I use here. 20, oh, Moen, my goodness. Uh, this is someone who already does a lot of work on the side for me, as I remember now he's doing anything. Now the mouse and biscuit fund has been closed, <laughs> I hereby open oh. the non-slip bath mitt fund. Uh, Barriana, come here. It's your story time. <laughs> Guys who are not members, we have plenty of stories to tell about our personal escapades. Would you like to explain to the dear ladies and gentlemen what you did yesterday? You've just got five pounds for a bath mat fund from Moen. <laughs> Mariana yesterday in the shower had a little bit of a slip and a fall. <laughs> yeah, what was the song called? Guys, I'm not going to play it because I might get a copyright spike. But uh, what was the song called? Tango shoes. If you search Google now for tango shoes, someone dancing to tango shoes, and then imagine that in a shower, a wet, slippy shower floor, <laughs> and imagine what I had to go pick up afterwards. You really saw, aren't you? You're actually quite badly bruised. So. Yes, you made me get up. Thanks, Moen. <laughs> 
you're actually really no, achy. So yes, thank you very much, Marion. I will put that towards the bath mat fund to ensure that Mariana can stand solid as a rock <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> no risk of slipping. And uh, <laughs> she might have to get yeah, your aid. Thanks, Marion. Thanks for that. <laughs> Lee Richard, I did that at the gym and dislocated my shoulder. But were you playing, what was it, tango boots? Tango shoes. Oh, tango shoes, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, fine. Right. Anyway, thanks a lot, Moe. <laughs> thanks a lot. That was actually quite, quite 50, worth it. 40. 30. <laughs> it's another 40, one coming from Jambina. Jambina, I got your message on Discord. I'll get back to you on that. Sorry, buddy. Thanks. Five bangers for the Mariana bath mat grab handle fund. <laughs> I, like, I like the way you used to turn bangers as well. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> so, bath mat. Grab handle. I may just put you in an old people's home, you know, because they've got all that installed ready, haven't they? I've just come around with my tray. Here you go, Mariana. Here's your dinner. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, dear. Uh, flat 40. Who could possibly dislike? I don't know. <laughs> Someone who doesn't get a terrific sense of humour. Uh, right. <laughs> Probably the shower. Right, anyway, uh, so we've got everything 50, in the air for mess really loaded. 30, 20, <laughs> 10, you, better, you better get out of here. <laughs> Thanks, David Dillon, for the $10. Funny dancing in the shower emergency services. Job security. <laughs> Glad she is all right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dave Dillon. That's very, David Dillon's very kind. Emergency services, job security. Outstanding. She's fine. She's fine. Oh dear. Ah, right. Yeah. Now, can I please explain why I have a membership bar next to my name? This is completely. So basically, I think I don't know why, but YouTube said you've been randomly chosen for a free membership. I was like, okay, great. And the thing is, if you use your membership, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. You get a month free. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't really follow any other YouTubers. Uh, and I certainly don't want to sign up a month's membership. So I just thought, you know what, I'll sign up to myself, <laughs> see what happens. Uh, so I did, and I didn't realise. I now display as a new member on my own channel. I realised how much of Burke I look like, and I can't cancel it because it's a free, it's a free thing for a month. So I'm going to be a member until the 31st of January <laughs> with a new member epaulet next to myself. I was like, oh great, okay. But apparently, I get uh, two pound from YouTube for doing that. Because that, that's what YouTube take. They take uh, for for the five pound membership. YouTube take um, two pounds, and uh, and three pounds comes through to the the content creator. Of course, you still have to pay tax on top of that as well. So that's how it works. So yeah, bit of a fail there. Uh, yes, you all outrank me. Unbelievable, I know. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right. Anyway, <laughs> top of the set, uh Still a way away, while well away here. We have no ATC, unfortunately. Um, so set page is loaded. Um, charts coming in then from Pole Hill, which we're approaching shortly. 14 miles away, we're going to be going to Gas. No, sorry, Gokov. Uh, Gokov to Urkov, flight level 160, which is coded. Xodru, which is 120. says which is 90, max 220 knots. So it's all in the FMC. And all I'm doing from says is just routing direct to the uh, center fix, which is on around a 10 mile final here. Center fix 22. So that's it, really. Uh, what else do the stars say? If you don't get any clearance beyond says you have to hold says That's fine. And there's a lot of information here about the equipment you need to have on board, uh, the expected arrivals, and uh, please, with your descent planning, um, comply with these restrictions. So that's it for the arrival. Uh, RLS then. Triple one five. We'll put that active both sides. Triple one five. Um, Course is a two four six. Two four six sets. Uh, four miles height check at fifteen seventy. That's not coded, but uh, it doesn't need to be. Uh, minimums are 439 feet, which is 200 feet AGL. Oh, we've got Newcastle Approach already trying to contact us on 2437. Alright, let's check in. Let's make sure they can hear us. Approach 25, Alpac 
Respond. Four kilo Mike's been having a nightmare. Need to descend anyway. And Newcastle approach. Hello, Alpaca 41 November Tango maintaining flight level 280 in a left turn now direct to uh, Gokov. Request descent. Alpaca 41 November Tango Newcastle radar. Hello, Paul Hill 1 November arrival vectoring on this approach runway 25. When ready, descend flight level 150. Uh, it's the pole 1 November, then expecting vectors for uh, ILS 25. And when ready, just confirm cleared level. Sorry, I'm back at 4 1 November Tango. I'm back at 4 1 November winning. Oh, I'm back at 4 1 November Tango when ready. He's in flight level 150. Does that fly level 150? Sorry, I drop my team sometimes as well. I'll pack a 4 1 November Tango. <laughs> 150 set. <laughs> Brilliant. I've done that so many times. I could tell you so many stories. There's top of descent anyway. Look, the aircraft's descending. Um, I once uh, flew with a good friend of mine. He's um, And I completely screwed up our call sign. I'm not going to say the exact call sign, but it, essentially I said, instead of saying the numbers 2 2, I said choo choo. And the whole sector. The captain, every time I was on the radio, went choo choo. <laughs> London, uh, London Centre checked in with if they're having a right laugh. So don't worry about it. If you're a controller or an ATC, you do stuff like that all the time. I go through a pole hill tunnel that worked quite a long one between Orpington and Seven Oaks. Think Pole Hill 4 is a lot further north. Two, two I'm off until the 27th now, more streams to keep me occupied. Thank you very much. Laugh and Cheers, Kim. Thanks for five pounds. Uh, and you go through the tunnel we're just flying right over the top of, so uh, that's really cool. Uh, yes, plenty of streams coming up, Kieran, right up to run up to Christmas, so we'll keep you occupied. Thanks a lot, buddy, uh, for the continued support and uh, uh, no, to Alpaca 6 go, Fox short, hold out for 3, contact Newcastle ground, 1-2-1, that's 4 7 2 5 He's controlling everyone here, yeah, uh, I haven't finished setting up here, so yeah, minimums. Alpaca 6 Lima Alpha, no ATC speed, pretty busy. Uh, yeah, so I think you can only set a DA here, uh, so in this case 439 feet is 200 AGL, so I'm going to leave it at 200 here, decision height. Uh, because Alpaca you can't just, Alpha, run a two five, it's not just seven, anything else there. Um, so yeah, Vexus platform, have to go around. I call Togo go around flat 15, set ground for us, pause for the gear up 400 feet, we'll gauge heading select, climb straight ahead to 2,500 feet, or 4 DME from the ILS. And then we make a right turn, back to locator 352 at Newcastle. Stand by for uh, Waypoint Gurley for uh, a <laughs> Gurley? <Girly? laughs> Cool. So, yeah, VNAV's actually doing a good job. I tested yeah, the sector yesterday and it was doing so much thing, but I think that's because I've got an experimental flight model on. So we're going down to make the restriction air core at 160. There's air core, and you can see the bananas at 15. So yeah, it's looking okay. Uh, I think they've done. I'll pack up four, one November Tango speed 250 and not to less. 250 or less, so I'll pack a four November uh, Tango. Um, so I think. I'll pack, uh, speed 250 and I not think ICG. Making steps to, to improve things, it's good. Uh, I mean, you can see prior to execution, it's still said 280, which it shouldn't do. But, but it, I think it's getting there. I think it's getting there. So I've updated the FMS to fly 250 knots. I'm just going to go level change to help her out a little bit there. That's the most important thing to it should possibly hold. 4,000 feet to 1008. It's a bit loud, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I think we've. Discover, uh, discussed everything here. Uh, additional information for this approach: MSA 3,400 feet in the go-around area. But we'll stick to the missed approach course. Pappy's on the left. Uh, land distance available. Then let's have a look uh, here. 2,400 meters, right there, just under. Uh, plus a display, slight display threshold. So we're going to try and vacate at Bravo. Nice here because you just vacate Bravo. Look, and then phew, straight onto the terminal. So tax is not much point briefing. I'm just going to stand straight away. Uh, performance. Uh, fuel wise, around with four point. So yeah, esti yeah, estimated fuel's, fuel's, fuel's not working nine still nine in the ICG. So we got we have got four point two, four point two tons on board. I reckon we're burning at three or four hundred kilos, no holding. So fifty point one uh, estimated landing weight. Let's go. Right, you shouldn't need to execute that. That you can't. 
that's incorrect. So it's, it, the FMC is just buggy. Uh, flat 30, uh, we're going to go uh, water break. Uh, three. Uh, Vacator Bravo and uh, Autosand. Who's Valpeca 4 Kilo Mike? Uh, good work getting on the Vatsim network. Have a little brush up on your RT though. <laughs> because I can hear a lot of copy that, copy that. You need to read back those clearances. But as I said, it, you know, our, you know, we've got to take all uh, levels of experience into account and stuff. Uh, and if you're quite new, you know, I can expect you to make mistakes like I make mistakes on our aircraft too. Hey guy, we're going inverted prior to landing today. No intentions of doing that. <laughs> Hopefully. So we've got a 44 knot, unlike the NG, the way I have it configured, this is a heading up display. So it's actually representing your drift on here. So the actual heading is uh, this, 005. Our track is where this white diamond is, I believe. So that's going to be 1012. It's the opposite way around. Uh, now 250 or greater, I'll pack a 4 1 November Tango. So I'm just going to keep it at 250. Just going to keep it at 250 knots, basically, just to um, comply with ATC. That's our maximum speed now. Send flight level 130, I'll pack a 4 1 November Tango. So 130 checked. Uh, thanks a lot to the unruly monster who's just joined as a, as a member. Welcome aboard. I hope you I hope you won't be too unruly as a member, but <laughs> thank you very much for your support. Glad you enjoyed the content, you'll get invited to our members only Discord. Thank you very much to your customer in chat as well. So I'm, I'm just staying in. Yeah, so you can see, look, VNAV. Next restriction is 120. One, I'm not ha satisfied with this now because it was looking good, but now it's saying we're 3,000 feet below profile, but we've got that. 120 restriction to make and I'd say we're, bit, we're actually high to make that restriction so VNAV should be giving me a path to make 120 by Zodru which we're going to completely fail at doing because uh, we're only three miles away so I actually busted the altitude here whoops <laughs> so not, paying, not paying attention but VNAV is in fact saying I'm 2,000 feet low so that's very unusual but yeah, we should be uh, 120 here, so that's, yeah, we're 4,000 feet too high, not, not. Send flight level 80 after Ed says heading 020 degrees, I'll pack a 4 1 November Tango. So, in hindsight, what I should have done, because I wasn't paying attention, and because the guidance here is NAV, um, they, look, they see that, you, you see that, look, <laughs> I mean, VNAV needs to work on this aircraft, look, it's just gone from being 2,000 feet, uh, hi, it's now technically representing my correct level, which is to be at flight level 90, Ed says. So, VNAV's completely thrown me off course. That's why you have to always look through it sometimes. So, yeah, we're 42 miles. We should be at 12,000 feet. We're 15. So, that's probably a little bit more representative of our profile now. But, uh, yeah, that needs a little bit of work. VNAV just can't use it on this aircraft. Yeah, and I think we get a bit more of a better rate of descent than 1,900 feet. We've got a speed braking flight D10. I mean, at 250 knots on the NG, you'll get 2,300, 2,500 feet per minute with speed brake at 250. We're barely doing 2,000 at the moment. I just think this aircraft's flight model is way too slippy. Um, and this is presuming that it isn't as slippy as the NG, which it has to be because it's, it's a lot older. A fans A increase speed. I could do that, but I've only got 4,000 feet to go, and I'm at a maximum speed of 250 knots anyway. Uh, 250 or uh, oh no, he did say 250 or greater now. There's not much point anyway because we we have to slow down soon anyway. But yeah, the FMS a little bit. I don't know. The, the drag profile I think just needs a bit of fine tuning. I've got the experimental flight model on as well, which I was advised to do. There is a true earth. There's the east coast of the UK. There's Sunderland up on the. What's Sunderland? Is it? I can't remember. Middlesbrough. That's it. Put the tilt up slightly. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be telling now ATC. Yeah, I'm sorry about the restrictions. <laughs> right. Need to go heading slack now, 020 zero zero degrees. Profile will come back now anyway. This one's available at 1104 right now, 24. Alpaca 41 November Tango. 
Set so altitude 5,000 feet QNH 1008, Alpaca 41 November Tango. So 5,000 feet is it's, uh, checked. We're a bit high here with the track miles to give us. We need to be around 10,000 feet. We're 11,500, but this speed break's rubbish. I'm only doing 1,500 feet at 250. That's just not right. Um, I mean, clean the 737 does less than that. <laughs> the NG. Uh, right, QNH was 1009, well, 1008, he said. Uh, so that's set once. Twice. Now, I'm see, I'm sort of basing my position of descent planning based on the NG, but this has left me quite high. Uh, 10,600 for altitude, uh, 5,000 feet, and the standby altimeter is set. And what I might just end up doing here is just asking for a few more track miles because I can bring the speed back. Uh, you know what, actually what I might do, let's bring the speed back to 220 knots with speed break and go flat 5. And this is actually a good way of recovering the profile. And that again in the 7.3 should give you around 2,000, 2,500 feet per minute. I just want to see what we are. Jesus speed 220 knots, I'll pack a 4 one November Tango. And what we're going to do is go to flat 5, uh, and that should give us a lot of additional drag with the speed break still out. Uh, so yeah, you've got to be careful with the classic because in the NG you can go flat five or two fifty knots or less, but in the classic you've got to be doing two two five knots or less. So we are fine to go at least a flat two now. Riding 0, 045 degrees to altitude 4,000 feet, Alpaca 41 November Tango. So we're just below the maximum flap speed for flat 5. I ideally want to be going a few knots or less. Now flat 5 with speed break, we should be doing 2,500 feet per minute at least. Um, in the NG, that's, it'll happily give you that with flat 5 with speed break. In this, it's giving me 1,500. Yeah, the, the flap drag model on this is, is I mean, just not accurate. I, ca I can't find it. I mean, if there's any classic drivers, I'd love to know. You know, what can you remember getting flat five speed break two twenty? Uh, you know, I did. I, oh my god, I'm a flat ten. Flat five. Um, flat five. So yeah, I just that ain't quite right. So what I'm going to end up doing is probably asking for a few extra track miles here. Um, if he tries to turn us. Uh, base early. I just say, can we have another couple of miles downwind and we'll go from there? Because at the moment we're we're too high. Cool. So right over Sunderland here. Oh, is, Sun is that Sunderland FC? Wouldn't know. <laughs> I should think it is. Yeah, this is this is this is not right. Flat five speed break, fifteen hundred feet per minute. No, I should be getting another thousand feet per minute. Well, the NG, NG for sure, but this is an older aircraft, so just needs a little bit of fine tuning, and that's why I'm high because uh, you know I'm not getting the performance out of the aircraft I'm expecting, so that I can't get much more out of this right from now, apart from going one eighty in flap ten. But that doesn't give you as quite a good as a rate of descent as two twenty knots flat five and speed break. Not barely doing fifteen hundred. So yeah, probably a tad high here to turn base onto a 10 mile, another couple of miles downwind and we should be fine, because this thing just doesn't want to slow down. At least I'm in something till I die. There you go. Okay, can we just have another two, uh, uh, 20 seconds on this, uh, sorry, 30 seconds on this heading, just a bit high. Okay, I'll pack a four one November tag. We should be able to take that turn in thirty seconds. Thank you. So that's completely normal, guys. A nice little trick here. You want to be around three thousand feet uh, at a ten mile final here. Um, so if it's looking like you're going to be higher than that, just just ask ATC. Just say, yeah, can I just delay that turn? You know, you know. Remember, it's their job to accommodate you, not the other way around. Don't be afraid to ask for those. Uh, you know, can I just have another minute or 30 I've done that on the line a few times, you know. Oh, you know, just have a few more track miles, please. No problem. And we're going to bring that speed back to 180 now. Run it. I'll back a 4 
Left only 340 degrees, I'll pack a 4-1 November Tango. Perfect, so that's worked out well. Got a bit of a nice base leg here. And that's taken us out to around a 14 mile final. So that's just worked out in our favour. And there's the glide slope. Always act conservatively um, when it comes to descent planning. Always act conservatively. It's always nice that you see the thrust is coming up. The ultimate goal is to, to be completely idle thrust all the way till 4 miles, but not always possible. Uh, okay, we'll get the speed break going up. Um, so, I, could I accept that base turn before? Probably, but it would have been extra stress for no, no point whatsoever. And we're ready now to turn final. Looking good. So we'll uh, sterilise the cockpit. There we go. I'll pack a 4 November Tango speed, 180 or not to greater. Uh, 180 or greater, I'll pack a 4-1 November Tango. So I'm going to give him 185, but my next concern is this aircraft, as I said, the flat drag model's a bit off at the moment. It, it struggles to slow down. I did on test it yesterday, so I don't want to be doing 185 for too much longer. A bogey. Left heading 280 degrees on the heading cleared uh, uh, Ilis approach. We'll send the glide slope out back a 41 November tango. Right, cleared approach. Correct sensing, localised on the right, one dot so we can arm approach. Just going to go back to 180. Looking good. I'll pack a 4 kilo mic, Roger. Um, Hmm, he's actually golfed down a choice, though. Uh, so there's a weather around our tilt as well. Guys, don't remember, we're doing two sets today. As soon as we landed, we'll be switching over to Microsoft Flight Simulator. To stay on VATSIM, I'm going to do a try and do a VFR flight to uh, Dundee. It's going to be great fun. So now I'm just using vertical speed to get us on the glide slope here. I'm going to go flat 10. I wouldn't usually, but just because I know this aircraft just... It struggles to slow down. Coming on to final, so I'll turn the music Ryanair, off. Ryanair 25 for Ryanair 25 Nice vectors from ATC, really nice. Uh, no, <laughs> Boga, no Boga today guys, that's a Sundays only. So out of choir, uh, what I should do is actually request for a descent here, otherwise we're, gonna, we're never going to capture the glide slope. And I'll pack a 4-1 November Tango request for a descent. Tango, Roger, to altitude, 3, feet further than the glide Send 3,000 feet, I'll pack a 4-1 November Tango. So you think that's a bit unusual, Tango, but uh, that can actually catch you out in real life as well. So you've been cleared to descend to a minimum altitude, but you've got to comply with that. Um, so it's a minimum okay, radar descent altitude. If you've been cleared to descend the ILS, you've got to wait until you're on the localizer first. So here it's coming in, and by going down to 3,000, that just ensures that I can capture the glide slope there. Right, so localizer, live localizer capture. So runway heading 246 is set. Glide slope capture as well. So the missed approach altitude is uh, 2,500 feet, which is set. We're fully established at 9 miles. We need to start slowing down now, guys. I'll back a 4-1 November Tango, fully established, ILS 25. So I'm going to bring the speed back to 160. Tango. Thank you. Speed 160 or not, all greater till 40 minutes. 160 or greater till 4, I'll pack a 4 1 November Tango. So, just to show you here, I've got flat. Uh, runway 25 cleared to land, I'll pack a 4 1 November Tango. I forgot to do my checks both up and down today. Awful. <laughs> Lights didn't even do an approach check. This so look, I've got flap 10 speed brake. The aircraft should be slowing down so quickly, and look at the speed. It's just that ain't great. It's just it's just like a an eel down a wet tube. <laughs> what an awful comparison! But that's what it feels like. It's just not. It's so dra It's so slippy. It's unbelievably unrealistically slippy. But my standards are slipping there. Look at that. Post cruise checks done because I was already on approach, but above 10,000 feet. So that's all done. Approach checks we've done. We're already established now. Um, busy, busy flight. So I'm going to put that speed break away now. Uh, yeah, just, just very slippy.
And he wants 160 till 4, which we'll comply with. And as soon as we get to. Alpaca 7 3 request. 4.5, four we'll start configuring. Alpaca 7 3, Roger, descend to altitude 3500. Ah, yes, I've got to remember to add these thrust levers, otherwise. Uh, and match these thrust levers, otherwise your speed. I uh, have no control of your thrust there. So approaching four miles now, I'm going to start configuring. Gear down, flat 15. I'm just going to go straight away to. Oh my goodness, that's the gear warning horn. Uh, 140 knots. Nothing, so start switch is continuous, recall is checked, speed brake is armed, green light, landing gear down to green, order brake is set to three flaps, we've got 30, 30, green lights and we're just waiting for our landing clearance. Lights are on. There we are, so once you get the, the landing flap out, I think the drag is a little bit better. Um, We'll have a look at the thrust setting here. I, mean, I can tell you on the NG, around 57% it is required to maintain your speed, um, and it probably is going to be different. It's going to be different here, but it can't be too far off. It looks around maybe a tad higher where it should be. Right, just wait, wait for our landing clearance. There's no one lining up or on the runway, so we should get that no problem. So we'll disconnect autopilot auto throttle now. It's not working. It's hard to do it by hand. And the other flight. Packet 73 well. is established on the Olive. Packet 738, Roger speed 160 knots until 4. Oh, I've lost my flight directors. How kind. <laughs> oh well. 160 till so, 4 DMEs. Maintain Packet 140 knots, Sphere F plus 5. He's leaving his late landing clearance, isn't he? Is he give me a little test. So small adjustments, attitude and thrust, yeah, not too far off with flat 30, I don't think, with this aircraft. Alpaca 4 November Tango, just to let you know you are cleared to land. Ah, cleared to land, Alpaca 4 1 November Tango. Did I miss my landing oh, clearance? Man. Maybe. Right, uh, fully stabilised by the landing gate, approaching minimums. Right now, 2-4 Golf, entering control, airspace, radar control. Uh, on there we are, looking good, uh, speed's good. Approach profile's good. Continue. Only heading uh, to send the glide for Ryanair, 2-4 Golf. And right to the glide. Oh, Checked. Oh, I, 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 I should get that right now. Eyes <laughs> hold. <laughs> Okay, again, a T and R A there. Oh, not a butter, but a great landing. Right, speed brakes up, reverses. That's how I should be doing it. So reverses, sounds awesome. 100 knots, manual braking. 80 knots, 60 knots. Side reverse, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Newcastle. It's been a very long time here. Since you got here, but uh, eight, eight, zero, brand new Orbex scenery, how cool is this? Stoner reverses, speed two, breaks seven, up, two, five, and we'll retract the flaps. Welcome to Newcastle. <laughs> I'm not going to do my, <laughs> my accent there, my Geordie accent. Right, straves off, get the APU on, because we got a very short taxi coming up. Awesome. Land, runway 25, Alpaca 73. Yeah, two, four, go, fully established for me, 25. Okay, so that's a nice little stand, and then we'll uh, continue the. Uh, There's a Tucano there, how cool is that? Notice the speed restriction for Ryanair 24. Alpaca 4 1 November Tango vacated a Bravo. Alpaca taxi straight ahead, stand 4. Straight ahead, stand 4, Alpaca 4 1 November Tango. Has to be us, because we're the only ones just vacated, and then stand 4 is going to be here. Uh, on our right, we could do the rest of the cleanup then. So trim's going to be set to four units, which I'll do. Transponder is off. Flight directors can come off. Three thousand one hundred. AP can come up on the bus. And probe off as well, and the weather radar can come off too. Wicked. What a nice fluid taxi in. I hope you enjoyed that nice little sector. Yeah. I like the IXEG, um, it just needs some fine tuning, um, and don't forget, I'm comparing by, I'm comparing it to, to absolute precision here, do I think it's a good investment? I do, I think it's, you're getting a lot with this product, um, 
VNAV, uh, like with the Zebo mod, it, it took Zebo and still is taking Zebo an uh, incredible amount of work to get that to work, and I'm sure in time they're going to nail it. Um, I, mean, I know it's an older aircraft and stuff like that, but it's um, yeah, it, it needs a bit of work with VNAV uh, in the descent there. But I think the most important thing they need to sort out is that uh, flap drag. I, I I just think it's far too slippy. I've, I tried yesterday with the experimental flight model off, which I have it off there. And now I have it on, feels exactly the same. I can't really notice any difference there. But that, does it really ruin experience? Not at all. You just have to manage it differently. Um, but apart from that, I think it looks fantastic. All the bells and which uh, uh, bells and whistles working. Yeah, I, I, I won't leave it so long until you uh, fly it again. Right, there we are, coming into stand four core. I tell you what, one thing I did notice with this scenery, when you get a bit close to terminal, the FPS drops off a little bit. It's still okay, it's 28, but I'm getting a little bit of stuttering as well. Right, that'll do. So, set the parking brake. We have two blues, uh, one red, and the engines are dead. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Newcastle. <laughs> it's my shorty accent. Stop short. I should have looked a little bit uh, too far off there. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Nice to be back here. It's been a while since we've been in Newcastle, so, so really, really uh, cool to be back. Uh... Raining King says, real nice. Thank you very much. Uh, landing with gear down. Cheat. <laughs> yes, it's actually nice to bring an Alpac Airways flight down on its wheels <laughs> for a change. No issues today, at least. That's a good feeling. It seems it's stable. And I've got this gizmo plug-in they use, which is good. Uh, listening 10 out of 10 would slip down a wet tube again. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't said that. Look, I'm busy trying to get this slippy plane down. It was the quickest it could think of here. Outrageous. Uh, hey, guy, good luck on the VFR leg. The better half insists I go shovel the snow site. Oh, hey, guy, sounds like you're snowed in. I'll show you some pictures on Discord. That sounds uh, pretty pretty uh, bad where you are. We love a bit of snow here. As long as I'm not working, I love the snow anyway. Uh, oh, Fabi Hansi, I did actually read my landing clearance back before. Ah, okay. I think I was getting a bit maxed out on that approach. Missed a few steps there. It's very busy, to be fair. Um... Pro controller watching the stream at the same time. Uh, I'm sure he was, yeah, because he sounded like he was. But uh, yeah, um, we're going to try anyway the next sector on Vatsim VFR. Um, it's been a long time since I've done any VFR flying of any sorts in real life, but uh, I'll have a little bit of a go on my VFR rusty RT, and I'm sure I've got some PPL holders here to remind me what I need to say. It'll be uh, great fun. Uh, Gface 100 Flight Deck to Sim, add me on Flight Sim 2020. I will do, but this will be on VATSIM. I won't be doing it as a group flight, but I'll make sure I add you as a friend. All the members have been added there. Um, so yeah, here is the Orbex Newcastle scenery. It does look really nice. So I've just noticed one thing. I mean, what's the performance I'm getting here? 58 FPS 60, and I noticed this with testing. Just when I get a little bit close to the terminal, the FPS drops look to around 30. Uh, and a bit laggy um, so I've not seen that before so those buildings look back up to 60 here I mean, these buildings are using a bit of my res a few of my resources there um, but otherwise around the airport itself the runway and stuff uh, performance is outstanding 50 60 FPS and uh, obviously sat on the true earth scenery it looks really nice literally downloaded it last night and also for Microsoft Flight Simulator, which we're going to see shortly. It'll be really nice to compare Microsoft Flight Simulator to True Earth and, and x 11, which we'll, we'll do. Uh, wicked. Uh, next sector, um, we'll do midday. Well, I'm not going to run it live time because obviously it's uh, sunset now in Newcastle. And I think it looks much better during the day as well. But yeah, we'll uh, jump in back into the uh, IXEG and uh, we'll do the replay. And um, I'll take a little break and go from there. Hold on, I've got a message on Xpilot. I'm trying to bring it up, but my PC is melting right now, especially close to the terminal there. Oh, explain I explain connection lost apparently. All right, I want to say thanks to the controller, but anyway, I'm going to speak to him shortly anyway. <laughs> right, anyway, let's jump into the uh, flight deck and cue the uh, funky music. There we go. Turn the alerts back on. And let's go from there. Yeah, lovely short sector. I might do some more. I've been generally streaming quite often at the moment, but quite long streams. I might do kind of like more two hour ish streams and stream a little bit off and just jump into aircraft occasionally that way. But whatever you like, keep it posted in the comment section of what you'd like to see. Not quite a button, but uh, I'd say it was a pretty nice, nice normal approach and landing. Turn the sounds up slightly here. I can't. 
you see, look, it's not a flat runway here. See, that's why it wasn't a button. Look, it was actually going up on that part of the runway. You can let me off when my mouse is look. That's my excuse anyway. <laughs> here she comes. Have I timed it perfectly? I think I have. Oh, nearly! It's a little bit of a bounce, though. That way looks scary. You should see the one in Birmingham. Hold it from this angle. Sweet replay function. I love it. Yeah, a little firm, but... A normal landing on any day of the week. logo. And a new destination served by Alpaca Airways. The Cardiff to Newcastle run. Thanks again, Callum, for the delivery. Absolutely wicked. Thank you. Sweet. Well, I'll let you enjoy the uh, fantastic engine view uh, on this approach and uh, taxiing on stand. As soon as that's over, I'll get Microsoft Flight Simulator fired up in the general aviation apron here in uh, Newcastle. So probably take me five to ten minutes or so from uh, me uh, editing the, this part of the stream or so. So uh, I'll go take myself a quick break. You guys can as well. And I'll see you all in around uh, ten minutes or so uh, for the next sector uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. In the, one, the Cessna 150 we're taking to Dundee. Uh, it'll be great fun. Be sure miss it. See you shortly.
brought levity to each other's lives. But there's a lot more to life than that, and I realized that uh, in these last few years. And um, we just became very different people. And so we had nothing in common overnight. It's very strange. Thanks a lot guys for that uh, intermission. Uh, here we are, all back again, ready to go in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've uh, logged back onto VanSim. I've just been briefly talking to the approach controller, who just uh, pinged me to say, uh, loving the stream. And I said, well, this is my uh, first ever time trying a VFR flight. I, I filed a flight plan under VFR rules. He says, yeah, it looks good. So, so yeah, um, obviously Microsoft Flight Simulator fully accommodates that's it, which is great. I'm using vPilot instead of xPilot, but um, I am logged on to the network. It all looks tickety-boo so far. Uh, I'm just getting a few things done here in the background, guys, so just bear with me before we talk about the flight. Um, live weather, just not live time. We're on the GA apron here. We'll uh, go have a look around the Orbex scenery anyway uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator, because I know obviously Newcastle. We've got a few... Um, a few of you guys in this evening, so I'm sure you'd be interested in having a look at the scenery anyway. Uh, so that's all looking good. Um, cool, so let's go to the showcase camera here quickly. Go to drone speed, whack that up slightly. So yes, we're in the default Cessna 150, Golf Foxtrot Delta Tango Sierra, uh, parked where well, I think we should be, which is on the GA apron. Now all these other aircraft around here are on VATSIM. Now unfortunately uh, there's no model matching yet, but I do know there is uh, some people getting model matching ready for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So these aircraft you're seeing are other VATSIM aircraft. So unfortunately, sometimes a light aircraft can appear as something else. Uh, now, there is a static aircraft there. I think that's the, the Jet 2737. But yeah, uh, unlike the x 11, I don't seem to get any performance issues with this Orbex one here. I wouldn't say I was having issues before, but just around the terminal, it seemed to be lagging slightly. But yeah, uh, if you think about 10 minutes ago when I was showing you the scenery and compare it to Microsoft Flight Simulator it probably looks pretty I think it looks pretty similar with the true earth to be fair but uh, yeah the uh, airport looks stunning so just need some decent commercial airliners on here that's that's all Um, I'd be quite interested though fly by wire fix there uh, or recently updated or patched their issues. I know the update, the recent update in Microsoft Flight Simulator pretty much broke everything, um, uh, autopilot wise. But uh, yes, for now, right now, for me, Microsoft Flight Simulator is absolutely perfectly suited for, for GA aircraft there. Um, so yes, let's um, 
get the show of the road here. Um, fuck it. Oh, now I've got to remember all the buttons uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we complete the cold dark. Uh, let's just set the altimeter here as well. Um, we have Newcastle Approach online, so he can at least give us our engine start clearance. Uh, maybe I could get the ATIS as well. So let's um, let's put. Uh, where's my uh, Cessna checklist? We're going to use a real. Cessna checklist, the one I use during my PPL. That's why I really want to fly the Cessna 150 all the time, because it's the aircraft I learned to fly on, and I've got all my old checklists. It's like uh, a trip down memory lane for me. It's so cool. Um, uh, yeah, well, I haven't even shown you. Let me bring up Navigraph here uh, as well. So here we are. We're going to be flying from Newcastle. Uh, flight time about an hour. Essentially, we're going to be flying VFR. We'll follow the A1 uh, motorway, which we're all familiar with, I'm sure, my UK friends, uh, towards the uh, St. Abs VOR. And then once we get to the St. Abs VOR, we're going to fly using uh, that VOR radial outbound here. It's the 322 radial. And once we're 42 miles away, we should be right over Dundee Airport. But yeah, nice VFR flight, stunning scenery along the east coast of the UK and Scotland. So it's going to be great fun here. Um, cool. So we've got rid of that. Um, now let's see if I can at least get V Pilot working. And hopefully you can hear the ATC. Uh, all ding. The fact I think someone commented they could hear it going boop when I checked in is probably a good sign here. So let's grab the ATIS and let me know in chat if you can hear this all clearly. So let's pop the battery on and tune up the ATIS which is frequency 118375. One, two yes. knots. It's working. Visibility one and zero. Even sounds really realistic. Kilometers or more, no cloud detected. Let's get the ATIS. Temperature plus four. Dew point zero. QNH one zero zero eight. Perfect. Threshold elevation two three nine feet. Newcastle information. Acknowledge your receipt of information, Foxtrot. Time one seven two zero. Automatic. Runway in use 25. Transition level, flight level 75. Surface winds 260. 1, 2 knots. Visibility 1, 0. Kilometers or more, no cloud detected. Temperature plus 4. Nippy. Dew point 0. QNH 1008. Perfect. Threshold elevation 239 feet. So I guess you can hear all that. Uh, brilliant. New it's, it's great that you could just have ATC and that's it works perfectly. Uh, uh, approach will tune now 124375 as well. Um, so you need to be excusing me here because um, a little bit about VFR in the UK. Oh, it sounds like ATC is working. A little bit about VFR in the UK, a little bit different to anywhere else in the world. Um, we're in class D airspace at the moment and I haven't looked any of this up beforehand because I only decided to go on that so just because we're on a request push um, and we need to kind of like have an exit zone so what would usually happen is out of an airport like Newcastle you'll have a, a VRP or, or a point okay you're cleared to leave controlled airspace via an exit point I've not looked any of that up so all I'm going to do is request VFR clearance uh, for departure Dundee to the north um, and it's control because we need to leave control airspace and then when we enter class G if there's radar control with Newcastle still we have to request a, a basic or traffic a deconfliction uh, service one or the other so we'll just request a basic service today but I haven't flown VFR uh, or in v VFR conditions for such a long time but anyway before we drain the battery let's get the aircraft configured ready for the edge start and we'll request our clearance as well so we'll imagine we've done the preliminary external checks okay so we're only eternal and starting so so my seats adjusted and locked hatches and harnesses secure parking brake is on radios are off at this stage it says well we're gonna get our clearance shortly Instruments are serviceable, legible, so compass is showing uh, 354, there's someone on that sim look, and we have 354, so that's all aligned nicely. Um, flying controls, let's just check those, oh, there we are, so we've got forward, back, left, right, rudders, all working, creaking, which is a good sign, mixtures uh, fully rich. Uh, well, that cocked about a quarter. Carb heat check, full and free movement. It's all looking good. Second brake is in, fuel cocks down here. It's on beacon on, and then we'll request engine start. So we're going to request that with tower first. And we'll go from there. 
I remember jamming in the request. Don't forget to request engine start from ATC. I know the control field. That one I just about remembered. And Newcastle approach Golf Foxtrot Delta Tango Sierra radio checker 124375. Golf Foxtrot Delta Tango Sierra Newcastle radar. Hello, readability 5. Thank you. Uh, we're on the GA apron in Newcastle. Um, request engine start in the apron and departure clearance for VFR flight north to Dundee. I think Golf that's Tango good. Sierra, Roger, clearance to beat the hold. Startup is approved and when ready, taxi the holding point Foxtrot runway 25. Edge start approved, and when ready, taxi hold a point Foxtrot for runway 25, uh, Golf Tango Sierra. So now he's come back with me and abbreviated my reg, I could do the same as well. Is that correct, Javelin? <laughs> so cool. Um, I'll be really looking back at, at the comments here as well. Um, actually, can you... That's what I like about that, so I think you can hear the audio from other jets. That's really cool. Right, um, let's get the show on the road for us today. So, um, turn ATC down. Is he quite loud, guys, I think? Um, I think so. Right, so primer, let's give it one. Let's get some fuel in the cylinders. Uh, beacon on. Uh, clear prop. <laughs> there we go. And uh, let's give it a whirl. The engine started. Beautiful. And my parking brake's not set. <laughs> there we go. So I nearly took all uh, uh, Roger's. <laughs> Roger's body to bits there. Make sure your parking brake's set before you start the engine so you're holding the brakes. Um, so, after start, RPM set to 1200. Uh, so we just bring that RPM back slightly. Okay. Let's set that there. Uh, so, all pressure, make sure that's rising to the green, which it is. Starter warning light is out, which I think is modelled here. Ammeter. Have they fixed the ammeter? They haven't fixed the ammeter. Come on, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> this is meant to be showing a positive charge. I thought they'd fix that. Uh, suction is registering. It is uh, magnetos check. Golf Charlie Echo, apologies. Grant has just logged offline. So Kieran's will be at the hold. Startup is approved and report rate taxi. I think the radio sounds better in V-Pilot. There's that little bit of distortion which just makes it a little bit more realistic there. Uh, that's it. Flight instrument set is required. to so transponder. Uh, we'll put that to on. Um, in the UK. Ah! Is it one... What is it in the UK? Is it 7,000 VFR? Uh, it's 2,000 IFR, but 7, 000, I think it's 7,000. Uh, so we'll leave that there. We haven't been assigned a squawk. Uh, heading radio sets tuned. And that's it. We've been cleared to taxi to the whole point Foxtrot. Now I've got no charts open here. Uh, let me just get some charts to show you because we don't have Avitab, unfortunately. Well, 7,000, thanks taxi, guys. Taxi, holding point, Charlie Whiskey, runway, you, you should probably think um, that I should know that, and you're probably quite right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's no need to so do fly, uh, fly uh, Cool, so um, here's the charts. Uh, we are just here, look, on the G apron. We've been cleared to taxi the whole point Foxtrot, where we'll do the engine checks uh, just uh, here, and then uh, we'll request departure clearance. Uh, VRP control zone chart link in Discord. Ah, oh, thanks, Javelin. In hindsight's a wonderful Chile thing. Chile but control I've decided one, two, seven, to do this here. To be fair, it hasn't given me any clearance here. Um, I'll have a quick look at that just after I've done the power checks, but let's get to the whole point now so we can do that. Here. Honestly, guys, this is just like 12 years ago. I love it. It's so fun. Right, uh, let's go to idle. Turn on the taxi and landing lights. Neptune 901 taxi alpha. Cushion left alpha hold short of delta. Left Alpha, hold short Delta, Neptune 901. It's just so awesome. Right. So, taxiing around. Turn coordinator, wings dipping, balls to the right as we turn left. And the heading bug's changing as well. Oh my goodness, it's so sensitive. Uh, ah, thanks, clearance will be given the whole thanks jam. So, I think it'll be worthwhile having a little look at that chart you sent me in Discord. <laughs> Where's the whole point here as well? It's very hard to, to see. He's a little bit up here beyond where we need to go. Newcastle approach, November Delta 14 request, VFR clearance to Dundee. He's following us. So there's 0725, there's the whole point for us. There's the VOR, look. And November uh, Delta 14, Newcastle radar, hello. Can you just pop in a flight plan for me, please? There we are, parking brake is set. Uh, so, uh, let's do the power checks. 
All right. Uh, so taxi we check brakes, rudder, differential braking, flight instruments as well. So into wind. Oops. So Delta one four. Forgot about that. Assessment. Assessment. We'll be at the hold. Start the uh, so and report ready for taxi. Let's set the power to seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred brakes are holding. Uh, car Delta breaks are ready for taxi. Set max. Delta one hundred seventy-five RPM. Alpha hold alpha five. Uh, Carburetor heat is Alpha, checked, magnetic is checked, left and right, so left. Make sure there's no drop of excess of 125 RPM. Back to both and then to right. No more than 125 RPM and 50 between the two. Back to both, such as 3 to 5. Amit is charging, still broken, and engine T's and P's are within limits. They are to idle, make sure the engine doesn't cut out. Giving way to the Cessna 172 and once he's passed, Delta 1 at 4 and way 2. And just good back to 1200. Oh, it's just, just like all my other building. Perfect, right. Pre takeoff checks, where's that? I might little check this here. So, trimmer set for takeoff. It's down here. It is set for takeoff. Throttle friction set, don't need to worry about that. And that's sim. Mixture's fully rich. Uh, magneto's checked, make on both. Primer's locked. Uh, Peter heat is required. It is 4 degrees. And if we get any moisture, we don't want any issues today. So, we'll pop that. Remember, that's one full taxi on the uh, checked. Set hatch harnesses and controls. We've checked. All ready for departure. Now, just before I enter this runway here, I'm going to have a quick look on Discord because one of the members has sent me the uh, VRP reporting points for leaving Newcastle, which I'm probably going to get in my clearance shortly, um, and it's worthwhile having that up. This is what happens if you don't plan to do certain things before streams. It's very unlike me, I'm very much methodical in my streaming preparation, I like to know exactly what I'm doing, and uh, deciding to go on VATSIM has obviously made it so much more immersive. Uh, uh, someone did say they've pinged me something there. Let's have a look here. Where was it, Jamblin? See, I've got a few tags. Uh, live stream, there we go. Ah, thanks, Jamblin. So I'm just looking up here. Let's see if I can get this up for you guys. So, out of Newcastle, there's a VRP called Bollum Lake or Morriff Railway Station. How on earth am I meant to find that? I'm not Completely unfamiliar. Look at those air other GA aircraft as well. It's so cool that they've come up as Cessnas. Um, I'll see if I can find these on the little uh, chart that comes with. Um, ah, okay, okay. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'll get the clearance shortly. But um, essentially, there's a couple of VRP visual reference points leaving controlled airspace. There's one here. Uh, and it's called uh, Morpeth Railway Station. There's another one here called Bollum Lake. So we'll head off towards Bollum. Uh, and they are the two VRPs for North. So we'll see what the departure clearance he gives us and where we have to go to. We'll have to try and spot those in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, but we'll get the clearance till we're ready. And Newcastle Approach Golf Tango Sierra is at uh, Hold Point Fox Rock Runway 25, uh, ready to copy departure clearance VFR to the North. Golf Foxer Tang, correction, Golf Foxer Delta Tang with Sierra. Roger, hold position off the departure runway 25. Kids leave the Newcastle control zone to the Morpeth Railway Station BRP at above altitude uh, 1500 feet BFR. QNH 1008, Squawk 3740. Uh, cleared after departure runway 25 uh, to the north uh, via the Morpeth Railway Station VRP. I'm at 1500 feet. VFR QNH1008 Squawk 3740. Uh, it's uh, Golf Foxtrot Delta Tango Sierra. Golf Tango Sierra, reback correct, report ready. Okay. Very cool. How cool is this? Oh, I need to do more of that sim on. Microsoft Flight Simulator. Right, 3740, not above 1500 feet, so we'll climb to 1000 feet. Well, we'll go to 1500, that's fine, because I want to climb once we're at clear of controlled airspace up a little bit higher. And the uh, QNH will just make sure it's set, which is 1008. Um, cool, so just to show you guys, and I'll make reference to this because this is my equivalent of a VFR chart. Um, actually, I'd love to know is there anything that syncs with Microsoft Flight Simulator, like with any official VFR charts? That would be really awesome to know and Jamlin thank you so much for sharing that, that was very good of you uh, to get all that information um, you're not supposed to pronounce the E as much in Morpeth <laughs> Morpeth, I don't know, we'll have a look right, but yeah, there we're going to go, we're going to go towards here, and there's a railway station which I'm just going to bring up here on a second 
thing on my second screen. There we go. I'm going to have a look for the railway station here. I'm sure we'll find it. Um, cool. Right. Well, we'll jump back into the cockpit here. Uh, we shouldn't need to backtrack, so we can just go straight off of runway 25. Uh, not much runway here, but it's more than a left length for a Cessna 150, and we'll advise them ready for departure. Golf, uh, tell us, uh, Golf Tango Sierra ready for departure, uh, no backtrack needed for runway 25. Golf Tango Sierra, that's quite brave, runway 25, surface <laughs> is 260 degrees, 1, 2 knots, clear takeoff. <laughs> oh dear, oh here we go, uh, clear takeoff, runway 25, Golf Tango Sierra. Right, parking brakes released, let's go guys to Dundee. How much fun is this? I'm so happy I came on that sim. It's just brilliant. I mean, how's my VFR terminology getting on as well, guys? I'd like to know. <laughs> I feel like I don't have a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> right, we're not going to backtrack, remember. There's not much runway left, but uh, I'm sure with a little Cessna here. I used to take off from a runway that was 400 metres long, so... The first time permission, Golf Fox went off at Charlie Echo is a runway to There we go. Guys, get your tokens uh, in chat. Uh, We're going to Dundee. Echo, right, full power. Yeah, uh, parking brake release. Let's go. Uh, no takeoff flaps on a, on a tarmac runway. We never used to use uh, takeoff flaps. Rotate at 40 knots. Loads of runway look. Rotate. Uh, 65 knots. And trim for 65. Look at that. Off we go. Got Charlie Echo correct, report ready for departure. So I climb up to um, approach 500 feet AGL. Number one four, we have flight control problem. So we need to feet. return to the ramp. Uh oh, he's having a nightmare. Delta one four, Roger, you can taxi back to each other. you are at via Delta and Alpha. Delta Alpha. So there's 500 feet AGL. I'm going to make a right turn north towards more more. Railway station heavily reliant on the, the Navigraph chart map right now. Now we're climbing up to 1500 feet, still in class D airspace here. So we'll have a, we have a radar control service from ATC. Oh, bit of thermals. So after take off, flaps are up, engine T's and P's are in the green, which they are. Uh, Golf radios. Tango Sierra, report passing altitude. Uh, Golf Tango Sierra passing 1,000 feet for 1,500 feet. Uh, we're now north to uh, warp station, warp railway station. Golf Tango Sierra, thank you. What service do you require us to have control that thing? I request basic service, uh, Golf Tango Sierra. Golf Tango Sierra, Roger. Wicked. I need to do some more VFR flying in the UK. It's just wicked. Flight Delta 1, line up on my 25. Wicked. Flight Delta 1, line up at runway 25, next to 901. So, I have not reviewed this routing at all because I was planning just to go direct to the SAP VOR, <laughs> but now we're on that set. There's 1500 Rebbit, not above 1500. Um, and we're heading north now towards more. Pff, I can't believe I'm, I live in the UK. I never pronounced this. Oh, yeah, transponder should be on altitude. I've just read that. Just testing it. And power, uh, there we go. So, altitude, power, 2300 RPM, trim. There we go. A little bit of a wind here. You can see it's blowing us in this direction, so I need to adjust my heading. It's the beauty of having a GPS if you had that today. And uh, here's the chart. So we'll use this as a, a VFR chart here, and there is a unpronounced town. Um, but yeah, I think if we just follow the A1, as um, you mentioned, Neil Rick, that's going to take us there, which is just on our right, but uh, northbound's there. Uh, and this is the equivalent of me having a chart. Now, when I did my hour build, understood traffic for you is a Cessna 152 at 2 o'clock, range 2 miles, similar direction, indicating altitude 1,400 feet. Uh, when I did my hour building, I never used GPS. I refused to do it because I wanted to learn how to navigate using just charts. I mean, this is back in 2000, 2007, 2008, where GPS isn't... It's still, it was around then, of course, but um, quite good systems, but, but uh, I just didn't want to use it. I wanted to learn how to navigate properly, using dead reckoning, headings and timings. Um, so yeah, we'll head off towards the A1, which we should be joining here shortly. There's Newcastle Airport behind us. You see the aircraft departing. We're on our way. Follow the A1 to Edinburgh. I know I could literally follow the A1 all the way, apart from, well, if I followed the A1 all the way, we'd go a lot, uh, long way off course uh, if we had to go via Edinburgh. But uh, should be fun. 
this is just awesome. I, I, I cannot say, I just cannot stress how enjoyable this is uh, for me. It's just wicked, absolutely wicked. Are you guys enjoying it? I know a lot of you just want to see 737s all day, but these split sim streams, they're just really, I, I don't know, just like a trip down every night. So here is the town of Warpeth. Uh, and then we're looking for obviously the railway station associated with that and the A1 is just to the, which I travel on many many times uh, up, up to Scotland, uh, is just to the, the left of this town. Well the A1 is, so I don't know where the railway station is. We'll have to try and look for a railway station here. Uh, this is really cool. Microsoft Flight well, Simulator zero, makes sense doing this. Absolutely. For Microsoft, Microsoft Flight Simulator is absolute king for this. Uh, VFR, uh, this is just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, we're just lacking some decent commercial airliners. So doing these split sim streams, I'm satisfying everyone's urge. Well, Sierra, leaving control there, one mile, basic service, Terminator uh, leaving controlled airspace will be basic service, uh, QNH1008, Golf Tango Sierra. And here is uh, Morpeth. Sorry guys, uh, ATC was calling. Uh, I was too too busy loving myself. There is the A1 motorway, look. That is the A1. Where is this railway station? I just want to exactly pick it up. You see, look, I'm having to make a bit more of a heading because of the drift. Probably some of you have played golf here. It's down there somewhere. Because remember, I've got live weather on right now, so what, I, I haven't got any reported winds. Um, but yeah, we are. We're now uh, leaving controlled airspace shortly. And that means, I think we're entering Class G here, I don't have any chance, but uh, that means we're entering Class G. 127825, Neptune 901, tax for service, bye bye. Yes. Absolutely wicked. That's wicked, I need to get some charts, I need to get some UK VFR charts. Remember, no autopilot on this, so you have to really, uh, to keep an eye on it, but once you're in trim, um, it, the workload's not too high. Now, what I'm going to do, um, I'm not really going to follow the A1 so much here, but I'm actually going to tune the um, St. Abs VOR, uh, which is a part of our routing. So, if I just bring up the charts again here, um, we are now in Class G airspace, um, so we're going to use this to 15. Uh, we're going to maintain 1500 feet for a short while, but then we're going to climb up to 2,500 feet for the rest of the flight uh, towards the St. Abbs VOR and then outbound for the VOR as well to, to Dundee. I've got a message from someone. Of, co of course you can uh, approach controller because I'm clueless pretty much. <laughs> Perfect. There we are. Now, remind me, now I'm uh, in Class G airspace, I'm no longer under radar control, um, obviously I'm still talking to controller. Am I right thinking, under a basic service, I can climb freely, but you'd still advise the controller, wouldn't I? I'd still say, okay, yeah, Golf, Golf Tango Sierra, yeah, climbing to 2,500 feet, I think I'd still say that. Uh, right, let's tune this VOR anyway, 1125. Just maintain 1500 feet for now. There we go. Let's get right on the radial. So we need to maintain a track of 340 to get to the St. Abbs VOR. So with that wind, I reckon around 3350 three, uh, can't be too far off. So there we are, that's just telling us to fly left or right, but obviously it's all lined up there. Uh, Brian, VFR altitude is your discretion under 3,000 feet AGL. Is that the same in, in the UK, Brian? Because I know the UK are very funny. I mean, you don't have basic traffic radar, uh, basic traffic procedural uh, and deconfliction services anywhere else that's outside the UK, but I'm pretty sure, Brian, that's correct. In the US, I remember when I was doing my hour building in Arizona, I could do what I wanted. <laughs> just climb to altitude. Time. 
And I'll flesh you through the back. And no idea it's in the far aim, uh, that's all US books, so. Screw it, I'm gonna go up. Uh, Newcastle approach. Uh, Gold Fox or Delta Tango CO climbing to 2500 feet. Gold Tango CO, Roger, there's no controlled airspace for the next uh, about 50 miles on your track, that's fine. Thank you. So, yeah, see, I was just kind of advising him as opposed to requesting, so we're going up anyway. Yes, you must. Uh, I think a lot of people presume just because you fly a 737 around means that you've mastered everything before. Yes, I, I was happily flying VFR in the UK and IMC 10 years ago. Never done it since. So, you know. I don't need to do this in a 737, I don't need to request climb to 2,500 feet, I don't need to say when I'm, I don't need clearance when entering controlled airspace because we're already always in controlled airspace. So it's amazing how, how those, uh, uh, you know, I would say, yeah, I would say skills, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it sort of thing. Anyway, I reckon it's quite a brisk wind here because I'm meant to be on a track around 345, on around 325. And I'm still showing fly left here, but if you look down, you can see how we're tracking in this direction. I mean, I'd love to know what the wind is at this altitude in the sim. Is there a way of finding out? Well, is, could it, I'd love someone could find out the spot wind for around two and a half thousand feet around Newcastle. I think it's quite windy here. Right, Rudder, yes, I know. Newcastle I know Top Bulldog. Right, <laughs> oh, oh my goodness, I'm going to be, I'm going to be making a lot of people cross here. In the 7 3, just don't touch the rudder ever. You're quite right, I should be stepping on the ball a bit here. I'll put a bit of rudder trim in. On a one Yankee Bravo, correct? Uh, one, yeah, this is an Aerobat. Um, who said about the windows? Yeah, listen to me. This is the Aerobat version, so you have um, a slightly more powerful engine, and you've got windows in the roof as well. I actually did my hour building primarily on a on a 150, but they did have a 152 Aerobat as well, and it was that much more had that little bit of extra power, which actually made all the difference. It's actually a really nice plane to fly. Uh, Jude, there must be rural enough remote enough parts of the world where 737s are flying kind of through uncontrolled airspace. Oh, don't get me wrong, we I've, we fly to destinations which have uncontrolled airspace as well ourselves, but uh, it's just eight dollars to, to see a lazy eight on this flight. <laughs> That's just got thanks a lot for the six pounds. What eight dollars, I should say? Uh, you want to see a lazy eight on this flight? I'll pass it. I roughly know what those are, but uh, my goodness, I'm gonna have to that now. Yeah, so you go up, turn round, bank round, and then descend, and then up again, bank round, and, des and then once you're around 80, 90 degrees roll, you, you're level and then turning around. Am I right? I'm thinking that's what a lazy eight is. I didn't know aerobatics, <laughs> ever. Thank you a lot, Pastor Escobar. Maybe, maybe. Oh dear, right, it's showing fly slight right now, so we'll readjust that heading to around, uh, what would it be, around 325. Uh, we're coming over uh, rough breeze on the left here. Otherwise, it's pretty much just uh, fields and farms. A1's off to the right there, quite a distance away. But uh, we should converge again with the A1, but we're doing more as the crow flies now. Uh, Julia Golf Roman, good old Goodyear flying, absolutely. Gila Bend. Uh, uh, what was the one over the racetrack called the, the arrival into Goodyear? I can't remember any of it now. You took it all for granted while you're there. I'd love to go do some flying there now, really. Oh, that was all that time ago. In the US, I think you have to do a lazy eight on your commercial check. Well, I did my CPL in the US, so I didn't have to do it. <laughs> do a lazy eight, that's for sure. Uh, Golf Shaleka, you're on a basic service, so don't have to provide traffic, but there is one aircraft flying parallel, same direction, similar altitude. Yeah, so basic service in the UK, it's... Uh, <laughs> What's up, playing in the background? Um, yeah, basic service, no radar control. Uh, you can get uh, traffic service, where it will give you information about traffic, but 
You won't take the responsibility of the radar. Thank you very much, Wojtek. Um, Newcastle winds, the lowest is 3,000 feet, 263 at 27 knots. There you go, I would not explain it. So the wind's coming in this direction, which is why we're being pushed uh, downwind. So I need to get my whiz wheel out, work out uh, the drift, so I know what heading to fly to track a certain to track a certain way. But I'm sort of dead. Well, I'm using the the um, OBS 50, here to know it's fine. 30, 20. Oh, jammed in. Thanks, man. Just, just DM me. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I didn't have to pick two quid. Thanks, buddy. Uh, wind at 2,500 feet is 250 at 26, according to windy.com. Actually, that's actually a very good resource. I use that sometimes before work. Check CB activity against uh, SIG weather charts. But uh, thanks a lot, uh, Jeremy, for checking. Gila Bend. Yes, you did golf for Romeo. I guess you, uh, well, you, you did your CPL there as well. Very cool. Break out the E6B. Oh, Brian, I've... I've got it. I kept it. I have no clue where it is. I moved house recently, and it's, it's. I know it sounds. It's around here somewhere. Uh, I should be doing a Frieda check, shouldn't I? Look at this fuel. Never trust the tanks on the Cessna 150 gauge, by the way. But I had full tanks when I left. Uh, radios, which you calling, uh, speaking to Newcastle radar still. Navigator tuned. Engines, temperature, pressures are all in the green. Uh, direction, heading indicators, sync with the compass. She needs to do that now. So we're heading uh, around 325 and yeah, I need to adjust that slightly. Oops, 325, there we go. Level, unaccelerated flight. That looks good. Yeah, look at the drift. Look, you can see looking down, I think mean, flown in. Going in this direction. Uh, this isn't the A1, by the way, below us. This is the A697. We actually have driven to it. So that's the A697 directly below us. Yeah, nice old, nice old drift today. <laughs> Free dudes happy, don't worry. You guys probably were able to work out the uh, drift then, because how do I get the navigation log up? There we are. Oh, gosh darn it, I did, it doesn't have via the VOR though, so can work out our drift. Uh, I think the heading from Newcastle to to uh, St. Abbs, you can base it off this one with the magnetic variation, it's only a couple of degrees. Uh, 340, what my heading needs to be to stay on the radio. I've got an app that can do that. <laughs> Uh, Tom Boddock, CR, uh, CRP5 is overkill for dead reckoning in a 152. I guess we're sticking to a low speed side. I, I can't remember any of those skills. I had so many rough... Up, it was like a clock face method. If the wind was over 60 degrees from your track, you'd use full... You wouldn't take... you take the full drift, you know, you wouldn't actually work it out there. If it was 15 degree or 30 degrees and 45 degrees, I can't remember. I can't remember any of that though. When you're flying at 500 knots stress speed, it doesn't make much difference, so... <laughs> Super, this is super fun though, super fun. So still under radar control. Um, I don't have any charts. I don't think we're going to enter any more controlled airspace and I think Dundee is in Class G airspace anyway. Beautiful. So many, so many memories. It's absolutely wicked. Tom Spires, I trust you then. Tom Spires, I'll fly heading a 327, which I, I'm i going to fly a little bit left, right of that in the moment, because I'm just showing a slight indication to fly right, but once we get established, I'll go on a heading around 327, 330. Sounds good. Super cool. So guys, if you are enjoying this... Uh, Split sim stream. You love the RXC action. You love the VFR flight as well. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Got uh, 413 likes. I'm having. I think I'm having more fun than you guys watching. <laughs> well, I generally do anyway. I love all this stuff. Um, yeah. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like the video. 
Uh, Gide Gulfromia, what did, when is the Seneca flight plan? We've done a flight in the Seneca in X-Plane 11 or uh, in July. Uh, we did that in July, which is good fun. Uh, uh, around the Caribbean. Uh, Caronado, which is actually the one I referenced when I was doing my CPU. Uh, uh, Alipay, basic service gives you takeoff clearance, and that is it. You're getting a bit confused there. That's just a en route kind of air traffic service received from air traffic control. Um, Takeoff and landing codes is very different depending on what you are. If you're in a controlled airfield, then you do need, like Newcastle was, you do need uh, tower to give you takeoff and landing clearance. You then have FISOs, that they're called, where they they can't give you takeoff clearance, but they can they tell you to take off or land at your discretion. And then you have uncontrolled fields where, yeah, you just uh, inform other traffic what you're doing. Very cool. But you've got some fantastic experts here who, who either have PPL holders, they regularly fly VFR in the UK or in Europe or, or any parts of the world as well. We have people who simulate VATSIM controllers, and I guess to be a VATSIM controller you obviously need to do all of it, especially in the UK. But yeah, great fun. I reckon that heading that uh, whoever it was that told us 327 is working out very nicely. You can see, look, we're heading around that. Smack bang on the radio. We don't have any DME, unfortunately, so we don't know distance-wise uh, how far we are. But it was around 30 minutes or so from Newcastle. And the aircraft's sitting very nice at 100 knots of cruise power, which is great. <laughs> Too quiet for a Cessna 150. I've turned it down slightly, Cyprian, so you can actually hear me. <laughs> Oh, Tom, yes. Oh, look at that. I haven't even thought about leaving the mixture. <laughs> uh, don't forget to lean the mixture. Best power, peak RPM, richer peak if you consider it to engine longevity. Yes, it was exactly how we were taught because we didn't have anything fancy. So. Oh. God, it's very sensitive now. I used to not be so sensitive. There we are. It's just dropped off. So let's lean now. Uh, um, Richard, slightly. beyond the peak there. It seems to be a lot further out than I'd think it would be. I reckon that's okay. Yeah, exactly as I remember. You used to lean it out and then oh, your RPM would increase um, and then when it drops um, off slightly you'd well, then re 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 reach it again just beyond the peak uh, just to keep the energy temperatures within the limits. Uh, Ethan, do you find the Cessna 172 and the Cessna 152 and Microsoft Flight Series to have a bit of a constant right rolling tendency? Uh, no, but to be fair, I've, I'm Roll. not. Tango Theory, you're also reaching the edge of my large region. Uh, my service terminates, score 7000, free call on route. Bye bye. Uh, score 7000, uh, thanks a lot for the ATC, uh, Golf, Foxtrot, Delta, Tango, Sierra, bye. No worries, keep it up. <laughs> He's loving it. Right, score, score 7000. I guess all this works from that sim, so you can see the score. Go to uh, one, two, two, decimal eight. There we go. I need to keep an eye out on that sim for some some events here. Lovely, absolutely lovely. So we're coming now up to the town of uh, Wooler. Uh, Wooler's on the left, or the village of Wooler. There you go. Has anyone here been to Wooler before? There it is. Thanks whoever that was. Check out the community mod for the 152 search for JP Logistics MSFS underscore C152. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jonathan Locked On, for that recommendation. We'll get a note of that. JP Logistics. Make sure I look where I'm going as well. Uh, I'll have a look. Yeah, I think there's people modding every aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment. As I said, one of the most entertaining streams I'm planning at the moment is for me to jump into this fly-by-wire A320. We've flown several A320s. Uh, well, I say several. Uh, the Totus A320, which I always find stressful. Um, and everyone keeps telling me that uh, the guys at fly-by-wire are working very hard to ensure that uh, there's a Zebo equivalent level of immersion in Microsoft Flight Simulator for the 
A320, and I know there's a lot of people working on it. I think the, their Discord has got some thousands of members. I mean, I'm not part of that because I can't give them any input. Um, but yes, uh, I was planning on doing that because I'm planning to do it from Manchester because there's uh, Macro Simulations, a new senior developer, has very kindly given me some free Manchester scenery from Microsoft Flight Simulator. And the plan is when there's a stable version, because I knew it was broken with the latest update. When there's a stable version, I'll, I'll do a flight. Uh, from Manchester or into Manchester uh, using the fly-by-wire um, A320. So yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but thanks a lot, John, for locked up. We'll check out the uh, JP, uh, JP Logistics version of the, the 150. Super cool. We sure do love Airbus here, I know. <laughs> We've had to, uh, yes, after, after last Sunday's <laughs> events, I've had to step away from my love of Airbus. Beautiful. What's the river here that's going through? It's uh, coming up to Berwick upon Tweed soon on the right. Absolutely beautiful. Some wind farms down there. Berwick upon Tweed's here on the right. Um, and we should be getting quite close to the coastline and then obviously crossing over the, the bay um, east of Edinburgh. So, very exciting. Aviator Geek 993, what do we be doing with the tanker to refuel? Brilliant. Uh, Andy, I think it's fixed now. 320 Simpon did a video a couple of days ago. Ah, very cool. Yes, I've, I've yet to contact this guy. I have spoken to V1 Simulations, but uh, there is an Airbus guy called 320 Simpon Pilot who's uh, pretty much doing what we're doing over here in the uh, Airbus like V1 is. Uh, so that's super cool. And I know he's been uh, streaming an aircraft, which is pretty cool. Thanks a lot, Tom Spires, for joining as a member. Welcome aboard. Glad you're enjoying the content. You'll get invited to our members-only Discord. Enjoy your custom emojis and chat as well, and I hope you enjoy your perks as your time as a member. Thank you very much, buddy. Uh, Mark Smith, RAF Bulma should be around here somewhere then. Ah. Um, now, I... When I did my R-Build, I didn't go that far north. I think the north, furthest north I went was Durham um, and you could no I went to Carlisle once that's I went to Carlisle um, I didn't go that much further north of my RB I generally stayed east west of the UK and south um, yeah I wish I'd come up here a little bit more often but yes uh, Barack Mont Tweed's coming up on the right and when I was actually our building I did a lot of VOR navigation I tried to find VFR kind of legs between two bits to look at on the map but along radials as well because I knew I wanted to be an airline pilot and I wanted to fly instruments and so I always used to practice my instrument flying using the uh, OBS or HSI. Super cool. Try a little bit of music. Turn our mics off, fly simulator slightly. There we go. How's that? Got a droning, light combing engine in your ears. <laughs> Very cool. So, probably only about uh, 40 minutes to run yet. It's a lovely VFR sector today. Trying to find people's houses. I don't know if anyone around chat, if you're going to be seeing where we're going. There's the chart again. So a one's just off to our right. There's Bosden, Dunno, Warncliffe, Berwick, one tweets next major town. There's St. Abbs VR. We'll try and spot the VOR as well. Um, I think it's depicted there. Uh, there's a little island here, which we should see. So that's when, when you're flying VFR like this, reference points like this island's brilliant. You just need to know, right, I just need to keep that slightly to the right. In a straight line for ages. Very cool. Better but jump back in the sim here because I'm not actually flying. There we go. Uh, Tom Border, should we see if we can pick up the ATC in Dundee? Is there any ATC there? Now, Dundee, I don't have any VF, uh, any charts of it from operator, but I think it's in Class G airspace here.
no ATC at the moment. Oh, I can see there's an aircraft on Vatsim though, ahead of us. Very cool. Uh, Catapan Dundee is controlled, but is it in? I, it might be. Yeah, I understand controlled is in. It will have a tower and a ground frequency, uh, an air traffic control tower. But is it in class? Is it un, is it in uncontrolled airspace or controlled airspace? I think you might be. I uh, mean, that's what you're referring to, uh, Captain Panna. Oh dear, 100 feet high here. Look, drifted downwind again. Look, that wind is strong today. Back on that uh, radio we want. What is it? Uh, 160 radio. Oh, catch by the I don't know. I've got a funny feeling it's class G. There we are. Here's the rubber that uh, flows through Berwick upon Tweed, which is there. Lovely. Yeah, I think Microsoft Flight Simulator really got this nailed, haven't they? VFR flying, absolutely nailed. I, I don't know what could make it any better. <laughs> just just decent aircraft, I suppose. Jonathan Wiltshire, it's class G, surface to 2000. Oh, it's gone. There's <laughs> probably some class A above it. But the Navigraph charts don't depict controlled airspace. Uh, on, they've only got en route charts. Uh, although they do depict controlled airspace. Sorry, where's Newcastle? Yeah, they do. They don't depict the altitude, so I can see. No, there's no, uh, there's no controlled airspace, class D airspace anyway around Dundee. It's just the airport. Oh my goodness! I need to, I need to start concentrating on my flying. All right, let's get back on that radio. Back to two thousand five hundred feet. Oh, Kate, or yeah, don't don't get me started on that. We explained earlier. Yeah, so basically, um, YouTube offered me a free membership. Basically, I could sign on free as a member, and I don't really watch any other YouTube videos, like with member, you know, join joining as members and sort of stuff. I kind of watch Formula One. That's it, really. Um, so I was playing around with the settings, and I joined as a. I saw that I could join myself as a member for one. Might as well because YouTube <laughs> pay for the membership fee for you. It's like great. Uh, so I. I Press join, uh, and I realised it's only for a month, and I was like, okay. Um, and once I joined, um, I left again because I realised I looked absolutely stupid <laughs> with a new member epaulet around my name, and, uh, and it's now uh, active until the end of the month, 31st of July. So I'm like, great, so it looks like I've just joined. Oh well. Right, let's get back on that radio. Getting very close now to the St. Abs uh, VOR. Wicked. When I do these split sim streams, it makes you feel like the other flight was so long ago. I can't believe we streamed the IXEG um, 2 hours 40 minutes ago, I started that stream. It feels. Does it feel like it was? To ask, it feels like it was yesterday. Uh, show body. Does the, the 150 have DME? This version doesn't, unfortunately. The 172 in Microsoft Flight Simulator has DME. Of course, you could add it in real life. You could add uh, DME equipment, but it's not modelled on this one, unfortunately. I'd look, look. They could just stick one in there. Look. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to 
get it all trimmed out here because it's kind of jumping up and down a bit here. So get the power off. You can see that drift though, look, if I. You can see, look, we're not travelling in this direction, we're travelling in, in this direction. Such a strong wind here. Look at that. Uh, Wilhelm, can I zoom into the landscape? Yeah, hold on, I'll uh, uh, bear with me. The sim might just freeze for a second because I have to turn on my Xbox controller. There we go. Oh, now it's just updated the power based off the Xbox controller. I find disabled that. Uh, now, if I go to showcase. Uh, there you go. So I'll zoom in a little bit there. You can see. I don't know the controllers on the Xbox to zoom. Oh yeah, I do. It's LB. <laughs> Excuse my lack of Xbox knowledge. I hope we're in trim. You could do some really cool camera shots with this. Yeah, if you want to zoom, zoom ahead here. I just did it a second. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, I, I still don't know any of the buttons on the Xbox, the Xbox control. I need to shortcut them. But yeah, let's just get to. Uh, let's just get back into the cockpit first, uh, just because we're about to look at that. I take your foot. I have the second floor box. We need to fly right. Look, uh, three, four, five. Let's go on heading up north here because we're we're quite close to VR as well. So this is getting very sensitive. We haven't quite passed it yet. So where's the to and from arrow on this? Not sure. Anyway, just to show you, I've got the charts up anyway, so it makes my life so much easier. But there is the VOR. And we'll try and spot it in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here you go. Look, you can see the radials coming back in. Oh, yeah, I did forget to turn the landing lights off. You're right. Save that battery. So back on that radial. should be out on our left. So come on, that heading that was working. It was around 327, wasn't it? Someone suggested. With the drift. That heading was spot on. Whoever said 327 in chat, look at that. Absolutely not moving at all. So we've got about uh, 10, we've got 10, 13, well, 13 degrees of drift here from the wind. Literally about to fly the VOR now. Can't see it though. I think it's over here because I remember from testing. I think it's there. I'm looking at the charts. Look. Can you see it? Look at that drift. I didn't actually check this last night, but I think it might not be in 3D. I think it might just be a, depicted as a sort of a photo image. And when you get to the fourth estuary, will you be above or below Edinburgh arrivals? I had a look, Mark Sanderson, at the chart uh, on Navigraph way below them, uh, way below. In fact, we're not even encroaching on Edinburgh's controlled airspace. Ah, there it is. Look, <laughs> that's the view. <laughs> that's the VOR. Obviously for that distance it looks like a VOR, but if you zoom in closer it's just like a an image. But there you go, there, there is the VOR we've been tracking into, St. Abs. Hey, look at that drift. There you go, obviously as we go over it, it gets a little bit accurate. Now one of the things that I've noticed Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I hope they uh, fix that, is the kind of jerkiness of all the instruments. So I noticed on the, um, the 747, uh, when we flew the 747-800 about a month ago, uh, which obviously, yes, it's a bit of a laugh that one. Um, it was very jerky um, the, as you descended. The altimeter was fine, but the PFD kind of moved in kind of increments. It was quite like that. Quite like that, but um, hopefully they'll fix that. Right, I can tell you anyway, the radio we want now outbound is uh, 322, which is set there. So we need to fly right. And um, a distance of 42 miles will be overhead Dundee, but unfortunately I don't have any 
DME equipment, so we'd have to work off timing, but I've not calculated any timings or anything like that. Um, again, anyone would like to work out the heading we need to fly based off the drift? Be my guest. I don't have my whiz wheel to hand, and I don't want to use the app on my phone. I'll let one of you guys work it out. So the, the track one is 322, and I'm not taking any magnetic variation into account here. Uh, so 315, no, 305 is our current track, so 305. Yeah, CDI is very jerky. Yeah, that's what I mean, Phil. I'd like it to be a little bit smoother in motion. Audience engagement. I know, Max, but you guys were the first officers and pilots in training. You go do it. I, I just sit in the left-hand seat and drink my coffee. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's a jest, of course. Getting a little bit of the uh, white ripples here. I mean, look at that. It's just spectacular, isn't it? Right. I hope you've got your life jackets on anyway. For uh, over the uh, fourth estuary here, um, so we're using the ra uh, the radial of the VOR primarily. But remember, we'll be looking out visually for this a um, uh, little bit of land here. So once we see that little bit of land, we'll be there. 24 minutes, did you say, Tom Boulder? Oh, hold on. Well, we, it's about a, about a minute since we've passed the VOR. Hold on, how do I get that log up? There we go. We'll start a timer. So. So we call it around 23 minutes, we should be roughly there. Be it on your head. Uh, 306. So 100 knots, 10 miles, 6 minutes, 42 miles, 36 minutes to Dundee. Okay, well, whoever gets closest. <laughs> uh, Tom Spy says heading 306. Okay. This is great. I mean, again, you just don't have to do this at like the 73. I haven't had to work out tracks and headings. Just automation now and it's great I think that heading you just gave me looks absolutely spot on 306 and it's barely moving very well calculated Tom Baller covers eyes <laughs> we'll see that that heading is spot on so we know 306 to track uh, what was that 321 cool, that's 16 it's 15 degrees of drift there. Bit of a windy day for the Blario 11, wouldn't it? <laughs> Guys, would you like to see the Blario 11 again soon? I have a funny feeling you would, so I've got a flight in mind for that aircraft. A little bit more of a challenge. But the problem is, with the very difficult version of the Blario 11, its range is so poor. You can only fly it for about a maximum of an hour before you run out of fuel. So some of the kind of more epic ventures are a bit more difficult to achieve without running out of fuel first. That heading. Who said 306? Brilliant. Top Spires. Cracking heading. Climbing again. Come on. My altitude keeping today poor. Well, I need to keep an eye out for some VFR events on VATSIM. I mean, that would be just brilliant. <laughs> Mark Smith, Blair, out of Dundee after this. Good man, what's the time? Uh, pushing it pushing it for time there, buddy. I, I know you'd love to see it, but I usually have my, my streams quite structured, so what I say is what I do sort of thing. I sometimes do an encore, uh, but because the stream was quite delayed starting, uh, I need to have my dinner on Wednesday. Who, my members will certainly know, Wednesday night is is very, very important. <laughs> You'll never see me stream on a Wednesday after 8pm. Blarion Vatsim, outrageous. Right, I want to get it all trimmed out so we can actually use a little bit of that uh, map. So if you look ahead here, Still looking for that little bit of land here in the estuary, a little bit too far off to see at the moment. Uh, got Dunbar on the left here. But yeah, we're way, we're, we're very far away from Edinburgh still. Um, Edinburgh controlled airspace is well above this, this point here. So little class G here. Uh, Billy Anderson, I think Microsoft Flight Simulator tried to appeal as an actual game more than a sim. 
know what, Billy? Sometimes I've been thinking that, especially with the obviously pushing it for Xbox as well, and it's obviously going to bring a lot of people in here who uh, are not so serious about simulation. But I think, and having gone to their initial launch event in September in Seattle, they were they were stressing how they were really taking into account the, the hardcore flight sim, and I think they're doing that. As, well, certainly for this sort of stuff, um, and you can certainly use it. VFR right now, fine. And I'm telling you, once we get some decent commercial airliners, the ability to fly over our planet is the main attraction here. I mean, we've all spent here, me included, hundreds if not thousands of hours spending so much time filling with scenery, ortho and stuff. And to get me wrong, once that's installed, you saw how great it looks in x 11. Um, I think once that's all nailed, they get some fine tuning here. Yes, it, you know, how long has it been out now? Three or four months and they're still updates. And I know a lot of the updates break the sim and stuff like that, but I don't know the thing, the first thing about that, but this is to do this. I mean, look, I mean, it's just wicked. This looks so special. <clears throat> really cool. Tobias just replayed the uh, stream to be 737 landing. Fly deck sim, we have to talk. Tobias, I'm going to try this new command, see if it works. <laughs> Please, there we are. Guys, we have a new command for you in Nightbot. Check that link out. <laughs> One of my members, Tobias, very kindly gone to the effort of reviewing every single one of my streams and putting it in a table. Uh, every single one of my landing raids <laughs> in in order of butterian butterianus is that a word? Oh dear! There you go. And in time, he'll link. I think he wants to link the streams, but I don't think you need to do that because if people want to find it, all they have to do is um, you know, type in the the, the airport code, type in the the four letter ICAO code, and you're good to go. Drifting off my heading, look, that heading I was told to fly 306, look, well off. Let's go back on a 300 here, get back on the radio. This is what happens when you start looking at chat. Now, I wouldn't want to be doing this in my Cessna 150 without a life jacket, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, I never travelled over or travelled over large body, large parts of water without a, a life jacket installed, but, um, yeah, it's worthwhile doing. Oh, you've linked the streams already, Tobias? Are you joking? Oh, you have, Tobias? Oh my goodness me, man. How long has it taken you ages? Well, to be fair, I'd link all my streams with my map. That's obviously the pinned comment at the top, guys. Is it all of my streams on an interactive map? Which I think is quite cool for, you, for people to play about. Um, but yeah, that's very kind of you, Tobias. Thank you. There you go, if you can't make landed single engine, don't you require life raft? I know that uh, here that was the rule. Yeah, now, again, I vaguely remember a rule where if you traverse over a, a certain amount of water or a certain distance away from land, you have to have A, if, if not a life raft, B, at least a life jacket of some sort. I can't remember at all, though. Um, so, if you remember rightly, just to kind of show you how much drift we have here, let's go back on this heading of th uh, 306 here, uh, which is working out quite nicely. Um, here's the VOR radio we're tracking. We're just passing to the left of this little island here, and you can see, look at the direction of the island. You'd think we'd be pointing the nose more in, in this direction, but because of that, that wind coming in from the west, we're really having to point that... that uh, uh, nose into the wind here to make sure we're on the correct track. Super cool. So how are we doing for fuel? Three quarters of a tank left. We've been flying for around, I don't even know how long we've been flying, 45 minutes or so? A bit less. Tom Baldock, been lucky to fly across the channel on a few occasions, single engine. Remember there was at least a 10 minute period where if the fan quits you're getting wet, nerve wracking. Yeah, I went to uh, Latuke once, Tom Baldock, um, with uh, 
one of the guys in the aero club. I was very nervous. Um, I had recently only just got my PPL as well. Um, I had about 70 hours. So I'd only had it for about three or four months. It was like biggest flight to date, you know. I was like, wow, going here, crossing, um, crossing to, to a different country, London airspace, really busy. I was very nervous, very apprehensive about that one. Um, but yeah, the UK, we've mentioned it before. Obviously, there's a nice GA environment here, and there's plenty of people flying around, but it's just so much more restrictive than other parts of the world, like the US, where you can just pretty much, it's very open, very accommodating for GA, whereas here, they're very strict regarding controlled airspace, you know, and they're stressing don't enter it, which is obviously, obviously very important, but um, it's just not, it's expensive, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons I didn't keep it up after starting my flight training, but we'll see in the future. <laughs> Love that comment. Uh, your thoughts about the Just Flights Vickers VC-10 will you be picking up from the scrapyard? Absolutely. I mean, the Vickers VC-10 is it's an iconic aircraft. Is it one of the fastest cruising subsonic aircrafts as well? We've got to pick that up. Is that out yet? No. I mean, I'll grab that as soon as that comes out. Is there, isn't there a BAE 146 that's come out? But I think that's for prepared. Is there one coming for X-Plane 11 as well? That would be a, an awesome aircraft to try out. Oh, I forgot to add the second aircraft, so yeah, uh, Alan Henson, I noticed you put the command exclamation aircraft, that's uh, referring to the first part of the stream, not the fact we're in a Cessna 150 right now. It's in development, thanks for that. Oh, the Convair 990 was the fastest subsonic aircraft. Very cool. Drifting off course again, look at this. My oh my. Let's go back on that heading around 295. That wind's a lot stronger, I think, perhaps here than it was. You can just see us. Look at us tracking in this direction. I think I might need a little bit of left rudder trim as well because it doesn't want to keep turning right now. Where is. Wasn't the rudder trim here by your feet? I can't remember where the rudder trim is on the Cessna 150. Yeah, it's got a. No, it didn't have it, did it? Did it have rudder trim? Of course it had rudder trim. I remember on the walk around, if you flew with it, there's a little bit of metal you could bend. You could just physically move it on the next flight if it was kept turning left or right. I don't think it had rudder trim, did it? I genuinely can't remember. <laughs> Not in a 152. I think that's why, Simon. I remember. Yeah, was, yeah you can see it. You see this little bit of metal here, guys. You could literally just physically bend it. Uh, so if on that last slide, oh, it kept wanting to turn left all the time, just bend it a little bit there. Uh, Tom Baldock, it's the Isle of May Nature Reserve on the right. Good point for an off-field if needed. Very good. Let's have a little look at that. Let's get my Xbox controller back on again. Oh, don't do this. It does this sometimes. Just turn the Xbox controller on, and every time you turn it on, it freezes the sim. It's just, it always comes back, but it's just, it's completely frozen. There we go. As it spat me off. And then, it, and then it uses the flight controls, but literally every time I tell it to forget the Xbox, I don't use the Xbox to fly the aircraft, I save it, but every time you turn it on it resets it so you can use the controls again. Um, let's have a little look at this nature set, let's just get it in trim here, whilst we leave the aircraft for our little venture. Excellent, let's uh, speed her up a little bit. Any icing in this cloud? Here we are. I mean, the detail is just phenomenal. I mean, it's just a random island in the middle of the estuary, nature reserve, and it's there. There we are. Look, so anyone in the estuary can see us. That's a nice screenshot, look at that. But I know we shouldn't be near, I mean, I know we need to be further left of the estuary than that. Oh man, that's me making the left turn. It's like we're doing a handbrake turn. So much wind. Oh dear, look at my altitude go up. Right, let's get back on this radio. Yeah, VMC into IMC alert. Yeah, maybe we need to descend here, yeah, perhaps. This is an aircraft you do not want to take into IMC. 
Uh, no anti-ice equipment at all. And it, what is the temperature? Actually, it's really cold. It's four degrees in Newcastle. Oh yeah, look, it's zero here, so we, we're very likely to get icing in this cloud. Now, just for fun, I want to see if we do get icing uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is te tends to be very aggressive. Should we, should we see if we get some icing? Number one tool tip, never do this <laughs> in real life, but I just want to see how it works. I should give it a blip of carb ice as well. Carpy. I don't know if that's modelled in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I just want to see if we get it. Slightly illegal, yes. Uh, but we have working instruments. But I would never trust the... I never had issues with the artificial horizon, but if that topples over... Phew. Yeah, that's that's a hard day. It's a hard day at work. Do as I say, not as I do. Exactly, Tom. Here we go, let's see what happens. If we get into icy, we need to descend straight away, but I just want to see if we get any. Yeah, very likely to get icing with this temperature. Here we go, on the instruments. <laughs> Which, this is not an uh, this is not a certified IFR, so I'll keep this heading at least. Oh dear, oh dear. So if you just join the stream, we are doing this on purpose, don't you worry about that. And uh, yeah, please. Always trust your in instruments. Oh, I can see just through it. Am I getting any icing? No, it's very quick to form usually in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But yes. So far, so good. No icing then, so what we should perhaps do is uh, behave ourselves and uh, drop out of IMC there. There is uh, Anne Strufa here. What, what's the drive time from Newcastle to Dundee, by the way? Obviously, yeah, I mean, you've cut out a huge amount of time to go via the, the, uh, the fourth, not the fourth road bridge. What's that new bridge called? I don't remember its name. Yeah, I know Cyprian, well an Cessna 152 don't always rely on the instruments, yeah, I say trust your instruments, but I would not want to take any of this into IMC in icing conditions. But it looks okay, I don't think we're getting any icing, that's uh, more the issue of not being able to see where we can go, but looks okay there, uh, clear ahead. Whoops. About two to three hours. And we managed it in an hour, very cool. Yeah, not really not too far to go guys, in fact, if you look out the window here, um. St Andrews here is on the right, and then uh, Newport on Tay, and then Dundee's just ahead. Oh dear. I'm actually, let's go down to 1500 feet actually. Let's go to 1700 RPM, pull out the car, Pete. God, this wind has been so strong the entire sector. Three hours, 12 minutes now via the A68, says uh, Matt Burgess. Wow. So we've managed it in 50, I think. Been about 50. Oh, look at that. Now, I've just cheated here by pressing B to reset the altimeter. Look, the, the pressure's changed significantly the further north we've gone. It's dropped by about four millibars. Following the St. Abs VOR. It's a bit more turbulent here. Taking a huge deviation look to get straight back onto that VOR. That heading of 306 will come back in shortly. It should take us right over the top of the field. They could have at least put the wind farms in the right direction. <laughs> they're, they're 180 degrees the wrong way. Oh, we'll, let them off. we'll let them off, shall we? Let's get back onto that heading at 306. Wicked. And, uh, 
uh, Dundee should be ahead in this direction. I think that could be it here. It's been kind of constant light turbulence here. You can see, look, I'm going to put on the control con. You can see it's just bumping around slightly. Oh, look at that! <laughs> now that is why it's very important to keep a visual look at as other aircraft look at uh, on Vatsim. And that is why it is so important to keep a good look out when you're flying VFR in uncontrolled airspace. Because you have no idea who else is there. Very cool though. Yeah, I, mean, I can't believe I had to use Vatsim on Microsoft Flight Simulator since I used it once. Oops, where's my heading going? Too busy looking at that traffic. Um, I've only used it once. But great. My rusty my rusty VFR skills coming to fruition there. Oh, G-Face 100, that's me in the Cessna. Very cool. I can see you. Now, that's actually a good point now. G-Face, I know there's a bit of latency, but if you waggle your wings, does that move live time, or or is there um, does Vatsim not take that into account? I'd be quite interested to see. Because obviously on Microsoft Flight Simulator Live, you can see an aircraft move live, but I wonder if it's as reactive as that. I'm trying to keep an eye on you. If you can wag your wings, am I still at fifteen hundred feet? Yeah, just about. I think on Vatsim it doesn't exactly move the aircraft as much as it should. Or live like it does on Microsoft Flight Simulator Live. It's kind of like stagnant. Anyway, I've been whirling all over the place. Tra ah, look, there's another traffic on Vatsim here. It's probably around Dundee. Better get up back up to 1500. My goodness, my flying today. head off towards that bright green light ahead of us. <laughs> so we should probably tune up uh, 22.8 here. And, uh, we'll start reporting our attentions. Now, runway is here then. We've got uh, 0927. Runway 27 in use with that uh, wind. What we'll do, we'll join um, a base leg for runway 27 and uh, land. Uh, Steve Mayer, hope you're doing well, buddy, and Mrs. Mayer too. Uh, boss, have you watched the documentary on Channel 5 last night about the dam busters? I haven't, Steve. Oh, I didn't know it was on. Uh, but I'll take a look. Sunday traffic off, Brolek goes to Victor. Final hour with 211 touch and go, Sunday. It's doing touch and goes in Dundee. That's so cool. Is that their aircraft gone? Yeah, what's that flashing light? Sure. Uh, this is Lu uh, Lucas uh, RAF base here. Now that's a good point here. I don't have any chance. Maybe I should. There, is there a mats around here? Military air traffic zone. Maybe I should be talking to Lucas uh, Lars Low uh, Low Altitude Radar Service. But um, there'll be no one online. I don't think they'd be too happy with me flying at 1500 feet over the runway without talking to them. But there's no ETC. Uh, Leo, how much uh, flight time left? Not long at all. Five minutes. There, there is Dundee. There. And there's the aircraft that's just landed. Touch and go. We're gonna. Go straight onto a base leg here. Don't forget as well, the scenery is from uh, Orbex as well. Overhead joint at 2,000 feet. Oh, go on then, Tom. Tom, what's the circuit direction here, left or right? <laughs> Phil England, I saw it. Bats penetration approved. Thanks, buddy. Okay, if you haven't tried already, give the Beyond the Grid podcast a uh, brilliant interview to the F1 fan. Very cool. Um, now, I watched today. It was actually a really good analysis by um, Jolian Palmer on the uh, crash from uh, Roman Grosjean on Sunday on the F1 website. Go check that out. It's really detailed about how the crash happened. Um, 
It's only about 10 minutes as well, so it's a really worthwhile uh, watch. Uh, Captain Panda run, uh, left for runway 27. Okay, cool. So what we'll do, we'll join overhead. Oh my god, let overhead join. I'm just going to go straight onto a base lane, it'll be easier. Otherwise, we're going to have to go over the field all the way around. Descend on the dead side, I remember. <laughs> Dundee traffic, November Delta 14, taxi into runway 27, Dundee. Perfect. Right, where's my checklist? How's it going? Traffic to Bravo 820, Victor, turning the left downwind runway 27, and then touching go. So, uh, so we know it's a left hand circuit, what's the circuit height as well? So I'll just probably join, I'm going to try and join behind, this reminds me of Goodyear, how you always have to try and, there's about six aircraft in the circuit, you always have to try to slot in. Dundee traffic, November Delta 14 taking off runway 27, we'll be staying in the pattern. Left hand circuit. <laughs> Two aircraft in the pattern, it's going to be my life harder. There is Dundee, straight ahead. Now, I'm going to try and remind myself what to do. Because if we're going to join downwind, and, uh, sorry, I'm going to do an overhead join. I need to go over the field at this altitude, descend on the dead side, and then join on the downwind leg. Am I right thinking? Not the the uh, crosswind leg. Better check in anyway. Dundee traffic, Gold Fox on Delta Tango Sierra uh, is routing in from the south for an overhead join, uh, present at 2,000 feet. Dundee traffic, Gold Fox, Relic, Ozilla, Victor, turning base and sign up on way 27. So that's, that's, that's the aircraft there. So, what we're going to do, we're going to join, join overhead and I'm going to join the crosswind leg behind this aircraft that's just departed. And look at this wind here as well. Uh, oh, who? What was the time? Someone's got, got some times here. Twenty-five minutes. So I'd say that's twenty-six and a half by the time we get there. Twenty-six minutes. So I can't remember what the original time was. Someone quoted. We should have had a competition. Uh, plain old bed, cheeky overhead join. I see. Now, guys, go check out plain old bed as well. He would be your VFR. I should have asked you these questions, but I wasn't planning on going off that sim. Remind me, plain old bed. Uh, I'm coming over here for overhead join. It's left hand runway two seven. Uh, I'm going to join overhead and then. I'm going to join the kind of crosswind leg from overhead, but at what point can I descend to the traffic pad? That's my question. Uh, Tom Bulldog, you said 24 minutes, uh, two, uh, two minutes, two minutes out. Sorry, 24 minutes, two minutes out. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah, uh, I can assure you, in the 737, we don't do overhead joints. <laughs> descend downwind. <laughs> Genuinely can't remember. I know descend dead side, but um, and you descend dead side straight to the pattern altitude, don't you? So I've, that's what I think I remember. Two thousand. Oh, I've already should be at two fifteen hundred feet here. But I'm going to go down to two thousand, and then on the crosswind leg, I'll descend down to the pattern altitude, which someone said is a thousand feet. I'll just tell. I'll just tell them. What Dundee traffic. Come up for Delta one four left downwind from two five. Dundee. So there's someone left downwind. That's him there. Look, someone's just done a touch and go. And we're going to slot in behind this guy in the circuit. How cool. We don't do loopings in an A300 either, right? <laughs> exactly. God, my altitude. The Gold Fox or Delta Tango Sierra is uh, overhead Dundee, descending dead side to join Crosswind uh, circuit, runway 27 Dundee. So that's what it is, when there's traffic like this, no ATC, you need to communicate with each other, so there's the traffic just... traffic, you go from like the Victor, turning a crosswind run with two, seven. Perfect, so we're now going to descend, and we're going to slot behind this guy, and in the circuit, so we're on the dead side. Remember Delta 1-4, left base, runway 25. So it's all worked out really nice out, let's pull the car, Pete, and it's a thousand feet, you said. Alright, I, I think this is roughly right. <laughs> so long guys since I've done this. <laughs> Can I have a rating out of 10 please on my VFR knowledge and flying? <laughs> I think I've done okay. 
Anyway, guys, this CD is from Orbex for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It was released not that long ago either. Uh, it's on X Plane 11 too, uh, but first ever time here in a sim. There we are. And the traffic goes from like a cylinder left. Backed out perfectly. Traffic uh, on base, traffic. traffic downwind, and we're slotting in behind him. There's a thousand traffic feet. Traffic Delta 14, short final, or with two five. Touch and go, Dundee. You're too wide. <laughs> Thanks, Plane Old Ben, for your critical critical analysis, but that's what I wanted. Uh, yes, I should be turning now. Uh, Gold Fox, short Delta Tango Sierra, yeah, is turning downwind to uh, uh, full stop, runway 27. Thoroughly enjoyable. 4 out of 10. <laughs> Brutal, Plane Old Ben. Brutal. <laughs> right. Uh, where's my bump fits check? So, brakes. Our off undercarriage is uh, fixed down, mixture's fully rich, fuel sufficient for a missed approach. It is flaps or set on the uh, base like uh, only set. butter accepted at Dundee. Uh, copy. Uh, hatch start is as nice. secure. Uh, right, looks good. That doesn't look so t uh, wide down though, plain old Ben. I thought, it, I thought that was okay. So we are behind that guy. Remember the. Wind's coming slightly behind us. Just judging that point at which to turn final. Which I reckon I'll do there. Uh, right, let's go now. Let me take a notch of flaps as well. Pull out the car, Pete. Now this is where track IR would be very helpful. Uh, I'm going to have to cheat going externally because it's the only way of really seeing what we can see here. Oh, I need to increase that time. Uh, extremely short final uh, touch and go to Chennai. Bit high, but I think for the Cessna, uh, that's the sort of attitude we came in when we did our flight training. A Golf Fox Delta Tango Sierra final runway 27 full stop. Take a final notch of flaps. 20 degrees for landing, bring up 65 knots. There we are, back with the pappies. I'm, pr I'm pretty happy with that circuit. I don't think that was too bad. It's just reminds me of a big good year now. Right, where do I need to exit here, by the way? I'll just take the next right because I don't want to hog the runway. There we are. Anyway, there we go. Lights, yes, landing lights should be on technically. So cool, some people are joined in to do some circuits. Very, very cool. So, I'll aim. To oh, look, the fire trucks have been called. Who did that? <laughs> well, a tad fast, but not too bad. There's the crosswind going from the left. Turn the music off for this button. Oh, crikey. Cut the oh, I forgot to cut the power. I'm not at the 7 through anymore. Heavy traffic. Delta 14. Left downwind runway 25. Uh, oh, well, that's a float and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think that's really good. Right, the stall horn. Right, break, break, break. And we'll vacate. There's an exit just behind us here. Flaps coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dundee. Our Gold Fox or Delta Tango Sierra is backtracking to vacate to the right runway 27. I'll call runway vacated. Roger, short final. <laughs> there we go. That's very quick. <laughs> I got Fox shot Delta Tango Sierra. Yeah, it's runway vacated. Go Fox shot Alpha Charlie Echo and landing room at So that was why I was being a little bit quick here because I knew there was an aircraft on a short final. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Turning downwind runway 27 for a full stop, Dundee. Uh, welcome to uh, Dundee. What a fantastic. Uh, Stream that was a great to come on that sim. My goodness, that increased the immersion level somewhat. Amazing. Right, clean up then after landing carburetor heat uh, to cold. That's uh, just done. Flaps are up. Trimmer set to neutral. Electrics radio non-essential off. And we'll uh, we'll go make our way to a little parking station here. Uh, this scenery is of course from Orbex. We'll have a little look around the airport afterwards. That was just epic. I really enjoyed that. I just love doing these VFR rules and I love kind of... I love interacting with you guys and we've got a lot of experienced PPL holders here. 
Rebecca just referred to you asking the questions because you know I've not flown GA for over 10 years um, and it's great to have that kind of reminding or, or you know you know reminding me of all the the stuff which have, this is a very much you know, forgot well not forgotten but it's so far in the back of my head um, I can't uh, str well, I struggle to bring it all back up quickly you know uh, it's certainly no 73 which I'm a lot more comfortable in but uh, yeah it's been really cool to, to do this flight right parking brake is uh, set Let's carry on with the rest of the checks here. So, uh, shut down, position into wind if ideally, but we can't do that here. We're actually on a main apron here. Uh, parking brake is on RPM 1200 for 30 seconds. We do a mag check. We can now turn the radios off as well. That should be on standby, which I don't think you can actually turn the avionics off separately in the 150. That's looking okay. Uh, idle power. And then uh, make sure idle cut off. And it's... Eh? I did that when I made the tutorial. It takes a while to cut off. There we are! Absolutely fantastic. No, <laughs> tool fire tricks, false alarm. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Toby. Yes. yes, Alpaca Training School have a bit of a reputation. Ah, so this traffic is actually on VATSIM, so it'll be quite funny to see how it reacts when he's taxiing. Um, you can certainly hear the sounds from it, which is great. Uh, yeah, so I think the motion isn't quite as smooth as it would be on a, a live flight. You can see how it's moving. It's not as bad as I thought it was. This is obviously, yeah, that's in traffic, not uh, other traffic. So on the on the flight settings, the Microsoft Flight Simulator have uh, everything off, so live traffic off, uh, and that ensures I think the traffic's depicted correctly, which is pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, that's the end of the stream. Um, I'll just have a quick look around here with the scenery for Orbex. I'm trying to do this a little bit more often, so uh, I don't know what it retails at there, but again, massive thanks to Orbex for providing all the scenery for me so you can have a look here, but I guess that's where I was meant to park, look, <laughs> instead of the main apron with the commercial traffic. But you can see it all here. Uh, we're next to the BA-146. And obviously just plonks right on top of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Just install it straight away. Why am I? Who here has had a drink at the Riverside Inn, I wonder? Plenty of value. That's uh, Alpaca Airways motto. Oh, what's on the menu? <laughs> the detail is just phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, there's even, even monkeys dancing here. Oh my. And there's supposed to be some sort of little cargo apron or something. Or truck apron. Very cool. There we are, anyway. Oh, we've got someone parking next to us. Very nice. And he's. Uh, Cut the engines off as well. I love how uh, that's it with all the sounds coming in the future. It could be really, really cool. All right, guys. Well, as usual, thank you very much to everyone that uh, turned up on the uh, live stream, to everyone that liked and subscribed as well. Uh, a special shout out to Angels Aviation who came in with a massive £100 donation at the start. That was completely uncalled for, but that's very generous. So thank you very much to everyone else that donated as well. Thank you so much for the, the support there as well. Uh, thank you, everyone that joined as a member. Welcome to the channel and to all my existing members. Thank you for the continued support. Now, plan is tomorrow. I need to have a little bit of a check and update to see how the 320 is the um, the A320 with Microsoft Flight Simulator because I might do a little s section in that to Manchester because the developer I need to contact very kindly offered me the Manchester scenery and also a copy to give away so that is the provisional plan for tomorrow no stream on Friday uh, it's a members private stream on Saturday but don't forget on Sunday as well we're taking part in the cross the ditch uh, event first time leaving Australia to New Zealand so uh, that'll be very early Sunday morning so don't miss that that's the first ever time I've had a little bit of a plan during the stream because so much time off I'm not flying until well at the moment now after Christmas so uh, I've got lots planned for you guys to enjoy the content as well and um, yes another thing as well uh, which I've kept very much under the ropes but we'll uh, slowly start introducing it here we are going to be launching a second channel okay more to follow soon okay but uh, you know in the past we've been streaming some video games and stuff like that I don't want to do that on fly deck to sim or fly deck to sim I want to keep purely for flight simming and aviation content as well um, so any gaming stuff like that will be linked to a second channel again but uh, it's all under ropes at the moment I'll keep all the socials uh, posted when that comes a little bit close to release uh, and that will be ran with Mariana Mariana is going to be doing some streams on there as well so guys that's it for now uh, take care and I'll see you all for another live stream uh, hopefully tomorrow and if not so very soon good night for me